Then, yeah, just wear the beanie. That's it. That's pretty solid. I feel good about that. That's a good way to start this. Get the attitude up high, you know. Go trade two J's if you could become Wolverine. Where are you getting all this information? I definitely heard some some rumors about it. Are you still going? For, I, I can't get goosebumps thinking about it because it's like you can hear them get the car. I was going to qualify and I was going to drive it out the racetrack. Just threw the hood over the ditch and longest employee of Knox. You did some digging there, huh? Look, I'm planning on attending every FD event this year. And if you're planning on attending any of them, I've got a little secret for you. Save some money. Use FD Podcast to check out. Save a couple bucks. Times are hard. Might as well uh, might as well save a couple of dollars. I don't know what you're going to do with it. Go to, go to the dollar store, get yourself something. You used to be able to get three things, but no. Now it's just one thing, maybe. But either way, it's like a free thing. So FD Podcast at checkout. Save some money. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Outer Zone, the official podcast of Formula Drift. My name is Jacob Gettins, and we have uh, Derek Madison himself. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? Can I, can, I, can I call you DMAD Faux Show 27 instead? Dude, you, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was my sixth grade gamer tag on Xbox, and I was about to bring that up. It's like, Dude, that's funny, but like, I'm sure you found that one. Yeah, man. I I you just I, be digging. I just check in those modern warfare two stats. That's all. You don't want to see those, dude. I saw them. I'm good. The regular better, modern warfare ones were solid, but once they swapped. Are you uh you got the gaming PC in the back? Are you gaming at all now or is it all like sim stuff? Not, not really. I pretty much go to work all day and then <laughs> go to my shop and work all night, and that's pretty much my life. Like I've got a really nice sim setup. Well, it looks cool anyways. And uh I never get to play it. Like never. <laughs> Do you think do you think you'll get into it more this year? Like once once things kind of get serious, if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah. One of my one of my buddies, Sam, has like a really nice one and it's like got all the motion and stuff. I'll probably go over to his house a couple of times before Long Beach Damn. and uh give it a shot just to make sure I get the feel of it. But I've just got like a cheap Lodge attack, but uh mine has like a full like it's full S14 like placement. It's got S14 dash center console. Like okay. a real handbrake and stuff. So it's like, it at least gives me like the feel like I'm in my own car. So that's a plus. It's just cheap. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's like, I, I think there's like a point of diminishing return with some of it. Yeah. You know, not that I'm big into sim drifting. I, I, I mean, I haven't had a buddy of mine like lend me stuff and I still haven't set it up. But I also know it's like, you kind of just have to have it ready. Like it always has to be ready to go. And it's the only way you'll yeah. jump into it. Yeah. And I'm so bad at it, man. Like, I, <laughs> professional race car driver at the worst on sim people are like yo you, you want a tandem i'm like you may not want to do that i think it's just it's just, i know like i suck at it anytime i've I've jumped in people are like oh you should be good i'm like listen don't don't get it twisted one i'm not an amazing driver two i'm an even worse sim driver yeah but just not feeling the motion is what it, i can't get it i can't get the time oh, yeah yeah. Oh, for sure. And then like, I have a, a Logitech G920. So like the, the transitions, it's just not there. <laughs> it's, it's pretty rough. <laughs> it's rough. Need to get this boy a SIM sponsor for this year. That's what Sim, we need to do. Sim Magic, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get on it, man. Why not? Right? Yeah. I mean, I've talked to him a bunch of times. We get along great. Every FD round we go, I go over there and say, what's up? And you should just what, like, you should just go need. and be like, Hey, I got to throw in some practice runs real quick. Yeah. And just like run, Can I jump run the line? layout. Yeah. Just run the layout. <laughs> they should. They should almost have like one dedicated for for drivers if they if they want to like jump in that and would, do it. That would be so funny. So funny. It's not a bad idea. I'm like kind of shocked not. that we don't see more pro drivers with sim rigs at, like in the pits. Yeah, like their own so they can practice. Especially like it's. I mean, it's commonplace in F1. I mean, everybody's got thousands and thousands of hours. So, yeah. I'm surprised it's not a more commonplace thing here. Well, what's like crazy too with F1 is like they'll do a race and then at the same time, there's a backup driver doing a simulated race. Like during practice, they'll do that and then they'll run tests on the car and sim before they make changes in the actual car itself. That's like, that's so crazy. I, I don't know if FD will ever make it to that point, but I feel like the re- level of realism in sim drifting isn't as close as it is in like F1 sim, but like mm. I would love to see that at some point. Yeah. Hopefully yeah, I'm a little I mean, farther along so I can afford to still participate. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's that weird thing where you want it to be like close enough where you can still participate in it, but not so close that like that's what every team has and you're just like, cool, I don't have fifty million dollars to run a program. So Yeah, hopefully someday I can get that F one driver salary. But uh right. right now I can't be that F one team. 
Okay, we'll get you there. Come on, you're um, you're a pro race car driver now. You make you got to be making a million dollars a year. You already know, baby. I actually just saw that on on Facebook just a little bit ago, and I was like, yeah, we're just as poor as you people are. Don't worry. I think I think I saw the same post. I won't yeah. uh, I won't like even say what it what it said, but a bunch of drivers jumped in and were kind of like, <laughs> yeah, cool, like, cool story, bro. Yeah, I was like, it's me. I'm I'm that guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't think people realize. I, I really don't think people realize just like how tight the budgets are. No, like, no, not at all. If I didn't yeah. have my boys, I'd be in a tough spot. It'd be me and my dad on grid and that's it. Yeah. Well, I mean, your dad's a cool guy, so. He's good he's, too. He can definitely help out, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he spotted for me in Texas one year and I was like, cool. My spotter couldn't make it. It was COVID year and like he had symptoms, so he couldn't make it out. And like, so my dad spotted for me. I was like, all right, well, you know what? This will work. And the mic just totally stopped working. I was like, all right, I guess this is a sign you're just supposed to be in the stands. Oh, like in the headphones, it stopped yeah, working? Yeah, none of it worked. And he was like talking oh, and one of oh. the people was like, oh, that was really well said. My dad's like, you didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Not one thing. Yeah. Do you, how, like, how much do you think spotters help? I, it depends on the situation, you know, like, okay. I usually know when I've messed up in a run, like if, if I did something wrong, I probably already know, but it is nice for like, especially like first time in a track, like you don't, you may not know exactly what you did wrong, or maybe they see somebody like doing something better be like, Hey, I watched this guy. You look good. But like, I just watched this guy do this. Why don't you try it? And then sometimes it's like, mm, that didn't work for me, but sometimes you just get way better. So I would say it's definitely a necessity personally. And it's mm. nice to know that like if they screwed up behind me on my lead, that I don't have to go, you know, 10 tenths. Yeah. No, that's, that's fair. I mean, I can definitely see it on that aspect of it, but like, I guess even like in practice, like what's your, what's your communication like in practice? Like, what are you, what are you asking for? Send me a video. I want to watch it. Yeah. Cause like I feel it in the car. Like I know what I feel at what point in the track. So like you can tell me, but usually there's probably going to be a miscommunication somewhere. So I'm just like, send me a video, tell me what you think, but like, I'm going to watch the video and like formulate my own opinion on the matter, I guess. But when it comes down to battle, it's like, that's when you need to trust your guy and do what you got to do. We almost need both. Like we almost need a spot somewhere like central to the track where there could be a videographer that's like, that's got a good, like, cause it's so hard. There's very mm -hmm. few tracks where you can really get a good, view of everything yeah right uh i don't know i think that yep. honestly i think the the way to fix it is we just live stream all of practice all of it i think that would be great and i mean based on our q1 call sounds like they might try to implement a little bit of that so yeah we'll see it, that'd be that'd be nice and it's, it's cool like daily driver media does that stuff so it's cool that, like yeah. even at least they live stream it's where we can watch and get a little bit of something different it's maybe sure. not the most premier angle, like FD angle, but yeah. still, hey, it's good. Better than nothing. I don't know, dude. I've worked the media pit with Nate. That dude will like elbow and shove people out of the way so he gets a good spot. He'll show He's up there like animal. the day before. He's an Doesn't animal. Doesn't miss a shot. Doesn't miss I, a shot. I love it. I love it. I've he, literally paid that dude since I got into FD. And I'll <laughs> never not pay him. He's he's like my go-to if if I ever need a shot. Because you know he yeah. has it. You know mm -hmm. he's got like two angles and it's in slow-mo and it's in 4K. Like it's, it's always in focus. Like he's, he's so phenomenal. When yeah. It comes the, to the only time he will leave that pit is if he's got a shot that's so real that he has to leave right now to make sure that he's the first to post it. It's the <laughs> only time he's out. <laughs> I think we've, he, I, we've all seen those. I think now he's at the point I've seen him pull his laptop out, like in, like in the, like in the media area, like he's yeah. just ready to go. Yeah. He's crazy. I, yeah, love, I love Nate. Absolutely. Yeah, he's love awesome. Nate. Awesome yeah. guy. Is, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think the, like being able to review the run, obviously that's the biggest part. I mean, having a spot at the table to communicate all of that helps, but at the end of the day, you probably have a good gut feeling as to what you did right and what you did wrong. Yeah. And for sure. to verify as to why. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's usually, even then, like, usually I know what I did wrong. Like I, you know, felt it in the brake pedal or like foot slipped off of something or like you hand over handed when you never do that or something silly, uh, you know, it's all, it, it's usually something obvious and you're like, dang dude, why don't I just do that? I never do that. Do you think it's, why. you know, do you think it's more driver error as opposed to just, I, I guess like it's always kind of driver error. 
<laughs> not, like, dude, not necessarily. Uh, yeah. Utah is car setup. Like, yeah, you could be the fair. best driver out there, and it, it's. I'm mean, don't get me wrong. I still made plenty of mistakes in Utah, but like I fought car setup year one and year two. Year one, I almost didn't qualify. I got thirty first or thirty second. Right. I went. Out and or I had such a bad score, it's like a fifty seven or a forty seven. It's like how do you even get a score that low and not zero? Uh and I over rotated on my second uh run because I like understeered and like threw a transition and couldn't catch it because I had nowhere to get I didn't know where I was going. And then like I finished second in the event. It's like yeah. whoa. But like this year, it's the same thing. It's like you fought car setup, I qualified fifth, went out in top thirty two. So it's like, all right. So Utah is a big car setup big car setup because you can just make the tiniest mistake and it's gone what would you would you change utah at all i don't know i liked there were pros and cons to both layouts like i liked the inner clip from last year right but i also liked the outer zone like they both flowed a little different like it's almost it's impossible to do but like somewhere on the in-between would be nice but like you got to give drivers criteria but like as far as initiation, first turn, last turn, there's not much different you can do. I think it's great. I love the high speed entry. Actually, if I could change Utah, I would bring back the speedometer at the entry <laughs> that they had two years ago. That was sick. I think I did one that was like 104 in comp. And it was awesome. And the last year they didn't have it and I was so bummed out. I wonder if it just becomes a pissing match at that point. Yeah, absolutely. I don't yeah. know. I don't know about everybody else, but like I've got a huge ego and I'm like, I'm gonna be the, the fastest one out there. I think all of you guys need to have it to an extent though. Yeah. If like, we didn't, we wouldn't be where we are, I feel like. Yeah, 100%. Like yeah. you have to have some of that, you know, I've talked about the competitiveness and like the weird things you guys do, just trying yeah. to be more competitive than the other one, but you do need to have some sort of ego. I just think some drivers are better at hiding it than others, right? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, and I mean like don't get me wrong, like I love everybody and I get along with everybody, but I'm still going to be the first one to tell Ben Hobson that I'm going to scrape him off the ground, even though he's an insanely good driver. Yeah. You know, I'm still going to tell him that and then we're going to laugh about it afterwards. And it's, yeah, it'll be fun. I'm still waiting for the day that I get to battle that kid. We've you never still battled, battled him. Three years. No, I haven't battled. This year was, this year was going to be the year. I was like, statistically speaking, it was my championship to win. And, you know, yeah. we had car troubles in round one and it was just all downhill from there. But like, I was waiting for that Ben Hobson final battle in my hometown, St. Louis, but oh, I, I got, good. it started raining right before my battle. And I got hit five minute timeout. Didn't make it. That's heartbreaking. It's a rough way to go. Dude, it's so painful. Especially, especially hometown, hometown oh. crowd. Whole families out there. Yep. Family, friends, everybody's expecting you to win, especially after coming off podium the year before. It's tough. Yeah. But dude, I love it. There's nothing better than driving in front of your hometown. I don't know. I, I, I hate yeah. that not a lot of drivers get that. Like a lot of drivers don't have a home track. Like all the boys in OKC, none of them have a home track. But dude, it's there's nothing like it. Yeah. It's funny you say that too, because like Last night I played, I played hockey in front of my son for like, he, he saw me come out play earlier this year, but like, it was definitely a rough start to the season, but like I'm, I'm on one lately. I'm, I've been having knock on wood. Cause I go and play right <laughs> after this. Uh, I've had a good stretch and he came out and saw me like in the middle of that good stretch and absolutely stoned a guy like big glove save. He tried to get around me, big split gloves, like just the classic making a, making a shooter look bad. And my son was like behind me on the glass and he's just like, just oh yeah dude, yeah he's like that's my dad that's my dad. like it was, it was. Dad just, ever. yeah it's just one of those feelings where you're like there is there's very few things that can match that like would it have been a cool save with nobody in the arena hundred percent would have oh, been great yeah. everyone was pumped but like having my kid right there just absolutely altering yeah so, oh 100 percent like when I played high school hockey and we were the team to beat and uh, so naturally we had all the schools backing it. Everybody would come out and they made an easy button one year, uh, was kind of like when that was a thing and they would put the easy button up on the glass when you scored a goal. And it was just the raddest thing ever. I actually literally was like on the front page of the paper because like hockey was like kind of big where we're at, even though we're yeah. Midwest. And it was like the fact that somebody got a picture at a high school hockey game was insane. Cause that just doesn't happen. It was like, <laughs> this is sick. Wasn't that, was that the championship winning goal? Is that the, the yeah. picture? Yeah. Yeah. You dig so hard. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't know if it was game two or game three, a best of three series, but it was the game winning goal for it. Yeah. And that was the our like small school championship, and then we went on to the other one, which we also you- won. Yeah, you, you also have an epic photo of you absolutely like snowing a goalie, which I was a little little mad yep. about. But I <laughs> you I know, hey, it. sometimes you guys deserve it. Uh yeah, dude, hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, the goalie is like the weirdest, uh, one of the weirdest positions in sports. I played it for a while. Did you? I didn't know yeah. that. One year, dang, you didn't dig that hard. No, I didn't no. find that one. When I was, was not young, your stats. Um, I had a coach that was a big bully. And he mm. bullied bullied the goalie so hard that he actually quit. <laughs> and we didn't have a goalie. We tried like recruiting one, and we weren't a top team, so nobody wanted to come play for us. Okay. And so I was like, cool. And I they got a bunch of donation goalie equipment, and we went from last place in the league to second place in the league. And I was like, damn, I'm a natural at this. My dad's like, you're not doing it anymore. No. As an expensive, very expensive yeah. role. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I bought yeah. a pair of pads when I was an adult, and I was like. <laughs> about the cheapest ones and it was still nuts. Yeah. I to I didn't even like I didn't go top of the line by any means. Like I didn't go like NHL spec. Uh I actually went with uh, Her- uh Brian's heritage pads. So like full modern on the backside but on the Heck front yeah. they've got the ribbing and everything. It looks so Those sick. Those things are sick. Oh, yeah, so nice. I, I bought but, mine like first when they got like updated and like tall okay. knees and stuff, yeah. Yeah, started going to like the actual butterfly style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think I'm four grand of equipment in this year. And like, that's not even close to as big as you can go. You can spend that just on pads. That's Easily crazy. spend that just on pads. See, yeah. I haven't bought hockey equipment in like 10 years. So I, my skates were like the first ice skates. They were like over $500. And that okay. was, that was painful. Is it like the Vapor 5s or something? Uh, X60s. Does that sound right? Okay. Our, yeah. our X60s. Yeah, it might be. Had like the dyed black toques and stuff. Cause I thought I was cool. Damn. I, I had a guy try to fight me over those black tukes one time. <laughs> he had the same pair of skates. He's like, nice skates. And then like hit me and he's like, let's fight. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> Whatever. I guess. I guess. Well, I'm I'm glad you've like unofficially <laughs> signed up then for the FD hockey tournament that I apparently now need to make happen. I had no idea so many FD drivers played hockey. Neither did I. I, mean, Neither did I, I love I. it. I love Just it. The more I'm research. for it. Yeah. I'm for it. I'm super interested now with like Brandon and Amanda Sorensen to, to see, like when I found that, I was like, Oh man, this is getting deep. Yeah. I knew Amanda skated. I didn't know Brandon skated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jaeger, I, it's, I, we Jaeger. just have to figure it out. We just have to you figure can't out. have like, the last name Jaeger and not play hockey. I feel right? like you say right? Rome, Rome played hockey. Rome played. I think Rome played goalie too. So yeah, we, we got, got two goalies. goalies. We're set to go. Yeah. That's all you need to play a game, man. <laughs> I'm, I would actually be so down for this. And the perfect day would be the day of the banquet before yeah. the banquet. I've, I've had a, it's funny, a bunch of people after, after I started talking about a bunch of people come out of the woodwork and they're like, Hey, you could do like Utah. There's a rink here. Like I've had people DM <laughs> me like to be like, Hey, if you need me to figure this out, you know, you, you said PRI, PRI would be cool, but I think it'd be cooler to do it like after the championship. And I'm like, man, okay. Like, let me just, Dang, dude. let me just get a roster together and we'll go from there. I'm just so. thinking about like when everyone's going to be there. So you don't have to like bring the boys on a flight yeah. and stuff. And, like, and I don't, I don't want anybody to get hurt like mid season either. So yes. PRI, PRI is an interesting one. Cause it's like it's post season, but like, this could be a lot of, a lot of hangovers. <laughs> I'm in like, yeah, you count me in All right. a lot, a lot of hangovers though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. might be me. Might be, might be rough, but I think, I think it's got to happen. I would love to, I just love to see more FD stuff like that. Like off the track, fun content of, of the agree. drivers just doing stuff. Even if it's like top golf, like that's the other spot that like people don't realize here's a, here's a fun tip. If you want to run into a driver after an event, find a local top golf. <laughs> yeah. So the RTR guys came out to uh, St. Louis a couple weeks ago for the St. Louis auto show. Right. And Jared and Ben were there and like Ben and I are like real tight homies. And like, I texted him. I was like, you're in town. We're hanging out. Like, that's just how it is. Jared somehow knew a guy that owned like this big golf simulator place in St. Louis. He's like, I know the owner We're we're going there. And I'm like, "Uh, is it cool if I bring a couple of my boys? Like, yeah, more the merrier. The whole place was ours. Just like rented out for us. And it was like, this is the raddest. Like you're, you're, so you're right. Absolutely. Right about that. Wherever yeah. there's golf, that's where the drift boys are. It's just a, it's just a competitive thing. You guys have to find something to be competitive with everybody. So mm-hmm. if it's not go karts, which I find it'll still happen, just doesn't happen as much. It's usually mm-hmm. top golf. 
That's wild. I'm just giving up all the secrets, man. I got to stop doing this. People are going to get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, I'm here for ah, it. That's all good. It's all good. So you, are you, how are you feeling like prep wise? Like where are you at with everything right now? Nah, Give people a snapshot. Good. Like where, where are you at? What's been done? What still needs to be done? Well, um, for, uh, for reference, we're five weeks out from round one. I, my car is a bare shell and I just painted it the other day last Sunday cool. and it has nothing on it. Not a one thing. So I'm not doing very good at all. There's not a nut or bolt on the car. Uh, I guess, nope, I lied. We just put the pedals in the other day. Mm. So, um, do you feel yeah. good moving up into like pedal box now? <sighs> you kidding me, dude? I'm still stock pedals. Are you? Yeah. Uh, yeah you see my bank account? I'm still stock <laughs> pedals. No. And you know, like, I like them. They feel good. I have no problem with it. We just got like a chase base, like booster delete with like the dual master cylinder. So we still have some adjustability and like, we'll be able to handle big brake kits and stuff. So, I mean, that's good. You know, I'm still drive by cable, so I don't have to worry about that. That's fair. And S chassis are just so figured out. So it's, it's super simple for us. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to like get into the big boy power, big boy tires, like all that stuff. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever made over 700. On the dyno. You're going to have so, to now. Yeah. We're aiming. Uh, we've got this fancy American force induction blower coming in. Gonna We're shooting for like 11. Okay. So that's going to be a wild ride for the first time. And the way things are going, our first time driving the car might be at Long Beach. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, such a classic mistake. Yikes. Yeah. Well, you know how it is. You know, everybody's yeah. behind. Parts don't show up. You know, you run out of money and you got to wait till you can spend more. Yeah, but it's fun. I'm excited. You know, I'm i uh, I'm a crunch time kind of guy. I'm a, when it, when it counts is when I make it happen. So I know we'll get the car done. Everything will be good. Even if we got to rob some stuff from the old car and it's going to be, it's going to be a solid car. So this, this is a full fresh, fresh. new build. hundred okay. percent. We're taking as little off the other car as possible. Um, we're changing from WiseFab to FDF this year. So okay. we've got a full uh, full front and rear FDF. I've never had a rear grip kit before, so that's going to be interesting and new. Never driven an FDF car. That's going to be another learning curve. Never driven a fast car. That's going to be different. But uh, <sighs> I'm a driver. You can do, we'll do it in the California pinball machine. We'll be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't make a mistake or you either lose or you wreck. Yeah. Which is also lose. Yeah. But yeah, with more style. Yeah. Yeah. It looks yeah. you get a lot more views on Instagram that way. So maybe I mean, it worked for her. It, it <laughs> sure did. It sure did. <laughs> that, was low. Uh, that was a low blow. I, he, he knows, he knows I love him. That's all. <laughs> his foot's still hurting as we speak. Guaranteed. Bro, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. I, it's, you know, I, I caution so many people against exactly what it is you're doing, but I think this brings yeah. to light the fact that you don't really have much of a choice. No. I mean, right. I've literally had a glorified pro am car all my pro spec years, yeah. pro two years. Like I just went rear radiator last year, my fifth year in pro spec. Front I radiator, think that's good stock advice, diff. Though. Yeah, I think it's good advice. I mean, I struggled. I'm not gonna lie, it was hot yeah. all the time. Like, and the year we were going to the finals in St. Louis two years ago, the car was at two sixty two. Right before the finals, it's like that's not okay. I don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess generally the advice is like, don't overbuild your car, drive what you know. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's for sure. And everybody's like, you know, you need a quick change. I mean, you don't necessarily, you, do need a, you don't, if you have an LS because they have power on tap, I get it for the Jay-Z guys. Cause like there's a little delay. So you want to be in like best power band ever, but like LS, mm-hmm. you know, you just give it a little clutch kick and you're back in business. So yeah, sticking with what you know, keeping it basic is is definitely solid. What what gear were you running then all year? Uh, so the three fifty six. I had a three fifty Z LSD that was welded, and okay. then stock axles, and never broke. Wild. Yeah, car was just good. It just worked, <laughs> and it was really fast. I ran an absurd amount of tow to make that happen. Yeah, but it was really fast, and we had one of the fastest cars for like the last three years. So. It's and we have had no grip kit, so I'm excited to see what this FDF kit's gonna do for us. <laughs> I do remember seeing the toe in your car. I think you and I talked about it too, and you're like, "Yep, is what it is." Yeah, like okay, like yeah. that holds up. Like nothing breaks. You're like, 
still running. I'm like, okay. Yep. One of my guys drove, uh, if, uh, the car broke and he like, he's an S chassis dude, and, but he'd never really driven the car. And once they fixed it, he took it out and like drove it around. And he's like, I don't know. It's bucking really bad. Like back in a straight like, line, chopping, chopping back and forth. I'm like, yep, that's just the toe. We're good. Like, and he's like, are you joking me? And gave me these just big <sighs> eyes. And I was like, yep, yep. That's normal. We're good. <sighs> I love how I really love how ragtag this sport can be sometimes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I, I don't even know. I, I was I don't know if I was watching a video or something the other day and they're like, man, I never realized like how sketchy some of this stuff can be sometimes. So I'm like, Yeah. Yep. It's pretty bad. Yeah, there's a there's a, there's a story that comes to mind that I'm gonna wait till this person's on the podcast, but we'll we'll get there. I've seen I do have seen some sketchy stuff, some real sketchy stuff. But like I was just in order to make the cars go fast. I wouldn't say I've seen anything like unsafe in FD, but I've definitely seen some stuff where I'm like, well, that's an interesting way to get around that problem. Like, yeah. yeah people will ratchet strap their engine mounts down and stuff. I'm not a victim of that crime yet, but I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> it's gonna, some, something good's going to happen. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. <sighs> that's why I love the sport though. You know, it's a little risky. It's, it's, I don't even really know know how to best way to explain it. it's the perfect mixture between like dirt track and f1 you know you get the dirt track the roughness the sketchiness but it still has a fair bit of professionalism like f1 mm -hmm. that's why it's like the perfect thing because like everybody likes to go watch dirt track and people be stupid at dirt track but also you like sick racing like f1 so just mix the two together yeah yeah it does it, it definitely pulls a lot of the the coolest parts and i've said before like some of the hardest parts from every motorsport it's it's oh, just yeah. Just such a unique thing. For uh, sure. I think that's why we're obsessed with it. Yeah, it's so hard to get right. Yeah. Where, where did you where teams. did you get hooked? Like where what was the moment where you're like, oh, this is the thing I'm doing now? Man, I was a Honda kid, which you I know, know that Civic of, was uh, sick, boy. You popped not, the hood uh, and everything with a cold air intake. Yeah, dude. That was a bone stock, but I thought I was the coolest cat in the neighborhood. Uh and I don't know. I just obviously video games played a part, you know, TV played a part. And I saw Turks off seasons one and I was like, okay. no, that's rowdy. And one of my friends, I, I was like, I kind of wanted 240. And one of my friends ended up snagging one and he let me drive it a little bit. I was like, mm, yep, this is cool. And another one of my friends had a car and I went out and it was a open face helmet and he like tossed it in at like 60 mile an hour. And as soon as I felt the wind in my face dead sideways, I was like, this is it. I'm, I'm doing this. And I had a car two or three weeks later, didn't run for six months. I sold it and bought one that did run because I was an idiot and didn't know how to make it work. And, uh, you know, skip us to now. Yeah. <clears throat> Wild. It's, uh, it's crazy how quick it all just comes into fruition. What's like interesting too, is you had an S 15 pitcher, like <laughs> well before you ever got into it too. Like, it's like you, it's like you knew what, like it was all blacked out and everything too. Yeah. It's like you knew. You're like, no, this is this is what I'm aiming for. This is, this is what I want. Yeah. And, and I, I wanted, even when I had a 13, I was like, I'm going to put a 15 in front on it. And then I got a 14 and I was like, it's getting a 15 front. And as soon as I saw, I think the first person I saw come out with a rear conversion was Brody Goble back in the day. And oh, I was ready right. to buy one. And it was cheap. It was like 550 bucks. And then 2F came out with theirs. And I'm like, oh, this is a no brainer. Yeah. And that's why you see those everywhere. And, you know, I get a kid every year and I have a poor man's S15 and half the fans don't even know it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so funny. Cause like, I know within FD, there's like kind of that thought of like the spirit of the car. Like we still want it to like, look generally like the car, which is kind of what has pushed away some of like the big body swap stuff that's like been played around with. But like, man, to go from an S13 to an S15, that's, I'm sorry. That's like a whole new that's car to crazy. me. Crazy, yeah. That's like a whole new car to me. But I mean, it's it's obviously kind of just been grandfathered in now. Yeah, and it, I mean, it, it looks pretty natural still too. It's just like the Sorensons. You would never know that they're not what they are. No, I didn't know. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, they. We did pro am together, and Sorensen and I, Brandon and I, podiumed at the same time there, and that's where we both got our licenses. And mm -hmm. I think he had got his somewhere else, but. They brought, I think, the same car back again, or at least like they were doing the same thing. And I was like, what is this? He's like, yeah, it's, it's an E46. I was like, what? Yeah. This is crazy. That's awesome. They look sick. Yeah. 
I like it. I I like it. I I still wish we could go further. I know uh, Taylor Hall was like talking about putting like an old Camaro body on or something, trying to find ways to do that. And I would love that. It might've been a charger or something. I can't remember. You see some stuff out there like that though, these days where like people are ripping the oldies. Yeah. Like bro, put a boat on a chassis. Yeah. Brandon. Let's do that. that So sick. (laughs) I I literally, I I saw him at uh, Jersey and I like walked over to him and I was like, Hey, I don't really care what you need. I'm going to give it to you from fuel lab because (laughs) I I, I need to be involved with this boat. dude. This is so cool. And, you know, he actually just hit me up a couple of weeks ago and we're supposed to be getting them set up with some stuff. And I'm like, I think that's a BMW chassis under that too. I think it is too. BMW yeah, it's is just a, all the body yeah. swaps. It's like a cabriolet that they they put on. Is it is it a cabriolet if it's a BMW? I always get that wrong. I don't know. It's like, I don't know what cars are supposed to be spiders and what are supposed to be cabriolets, what are just called convertibles. Like, I'm, I'm <sighs> not a BMW somebody, guy whatsoever. Somebody's I'm, super mad in the comments right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky enough to know the difference between a 36 and a 46. Yeah. That's all I got. That's I will say I like, I, I do know I need to up some of my like car knowledge in that area. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's just so much crap going on nowadays. Everybody's modifying new cars. It's like, man, I'm still figuring out the old ones. Yeah. Let me catch up here. Yeah. There's, there is, there's just so much to learn and like so much to do and just like try and keep up on. I don't know. I got, I got too much just trying to stalk you guys all the time to, to like know every single. Well, you're you know, good enough at that. Stuff. Start stalking some manufacturers next. <sighs> hey, did you listen to Jeff Jones podcast yet? Uh, no, I've just seen the snippets. Bro, go, uh, when we're done here, go, go listen to the last hour. First hour, yeah. don't get me wrong. The whole thing's great. I kind of went off on a bit of a rant about marketing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love like, that. I need real, help. real good one. Real good rant. I, I, yeah. My staff are used to it now. I, yeah. I guess there's like a, there's like a buildup. <laughs> Of like, they can hear me getting there. And then just all of a sudden I like tip over the edge and then I just go off. I wasn't mad, but it was passionate. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's understandable. It's understandable. Yeah. We the marketing all part's the, t- the tough part. I mean, I think you're a good, a good person to speak to it too. in in some regards, cause like, obviously you work with fuel lab. So, yeah. uh, I don't know exactly what it is you do there, but you kind of see both sides of like the sponsorship game. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I just do sales there, but I work hand in hand with Tanner who does all of our sponsorship and stuff like that. So, and I field a lot of them uh, just because I run like the main emails and stuff and we're a real small company. There's only 10 of us. So mm-hmm. I do get both of it. And like, I was sponsored by Fuel Lab prior to working there and I started working there like four years into my sponsorship and it's been rad. So, but like, yeah, I've literally got to see the total inside and out of Fuel Lab and all that stuff and the sponsorship stuff. Marketing's tough. Because now I get it, like, because I'm always the one sending the emails, like, "Hey, man, sponsor me," or like, "Help me out," or "Let's do this together," or "Let's collaborate on some content." And like, I see how many of those I get, that I'm just like, "Ah, delete." So like, I now I get why responses are hard to come by. It's, yeah. it's a lot. You get a lot, a lot of them, and like, they oh, if so you many. don't find a way to stand out or just like cut right to the point, right off the bat, like, yeah, it's like. You get a you get a half second look. That's it. You'd be surprised how many people send in the worst proposals ever, or no proposal, or just like, hmm, hey, I, I'm building a car. You should sponsor me. And I'm like, who are you? You didn't even tell I, me that part. Unfortunately, I'm not is. surprised. I've been looking at yeah. him for years. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's just pretty crazy. Put in the time. My favorite is when you get one with like someone else's logos on it, where like you can tell that they've like. I think it's good. It's a good practice to make a deck that you can change up depending on the brand. Like those mm-hmm. little steps do go a long way, but like make sure you change the deck for the brand. So like, you know, you work for Fuel Lab. Like if, if one comes with another competing sponsor, I won't even say who, but like their logos are, you're like, cool. Bye. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're just going to, we're going to block that whole email now. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Yeah. And it's, it's such commonplace too. And it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I've yeah. been trying to do it year in, year in and year out. And I'm lucky that the partners that I'm with were able to like get along real well. Cause getting new ones is tough. Yeah. And I've got really good relationships with my existing ones and I plan to continue to build those. But if I want to do this for the long haul, I'm going to need to step it up. Got any, any, more. any new ones we can talk about? Any, anything fun there? You know, I'm like I said, American force induction. Um, That's pretty cool. One of my, one of my friends is his dad you know, started the company just a couple of years ago and it was out of their garage. And one of my best friends went over to 
help them like figure stuff out with their new machine that they just bought. And it's just kind of cool that I got to see it from like start until like now there's like five FD drivers with one of their blowers, like Jack Davis, um, oh, right. Josh Love, Mata's going to one this year. Ooh, uh, blowing up Mata's spot. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Al. Sorry, Austin. He's fine. He'll be <laughs> but you know, it's, uh, it, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, bringing on Chase Bays this year, a tire company that we'll talk about soon. Right. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I wish you could have lined up. I wish you could have lined up the tire announcement, but I get it. It's we're a, we're a week off, a week off from the announcement. Is? I can yeah. delay this. He, uh, we'll talk I later. Mean, yeah, he he said March first would be probably okay. I'm like, we're talking February 28th. And he's like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's all good. Uh, otherwise, oh yeah, okay. I uh, brought on Cosmos wheels this year. Uh, okay, had, had a really good, long lasting. Um, relationship with Koenig and I love those guys always will. Um, but I've had a really good relationship with cause or, uh, sorry, silvers, North America coilovers for mm. just as long. And they also own cosmos wheels. So it's under the same blanket and they've been trying to get me to change over. And this year we're finally making the change and, you know, left on good terms with the boys at Scott. And, uh, yeah, I dealt with Louise forever. Those boys are, they're all good boys. Oh, good and, group of people over there. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to bring on with Cosmos. The wheels are sick. Uh, they're going to complement this year's livery, which is going to change up quite a bit based on years past. Okay. It's, it's going to, it's going to bring some, uh, bring a lot more attention. I think it's, it's no, no crazy change like Rome from red to pink and green or anything, but it's, uh, it's definitely different from my standard wheelhouse from day one. That's for sure. It's going to be sick. Okay. That's interesting. I mean, you've always yeah. had like, Black and flashy. It's kind black of like and black gold. and gold. That's yeah. my thing. I came in year one with like VSKFs ready to rip. And I quickly learned that I'm not rich enough for that. Yeah. That's t- that's a tough call. I had six six rear wheels and two fronts. That was all I had. That's just enough. It was not enough. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't make, make it through a practice session without running out. I brought my own tire changer because I was so scared about like not having enough. <laughs> That's tough. Oh man, that's yeah. There, just, we, someone's well, got to cool. write a handbook or something. Just yeah. like everything you need to know. I still, I still claim like if you want to run an FD, you have to at least go to an event. Like at a bare minimum, oh, you have to like yeah. go and attend an event. Yeah, it's like yeah. anytime like a a, a pro prospect driver coming in like reaches out to me and like asks me questions. Like I try to be as accommodating as possible mm-hmm. because when I came in. I didn't really have that, you know, like I'm talking about like, saying shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I was tight with like Alec Robbins and Jonathan Hurst and like a few of them, but like yeah. at the and same time, guys. like it was still like tough to get like information and stuff. And, uh, like now Hurst has been like incredibly helpful with like going up into pro and just trying to help me as much as possible, which is sick. And I'm forever grateful for. So like, I try to pass that on to like the guys that, you know, are coming up into prospect. Like I, I get DMS all the time from them just, and, I do my best to answer if I can. And uh, one of my local boys, uh, Cotty Dempster, is coming up and we're going to team up, share a trailer, match liveries. And I'm kind of taking him under and it's been fun to uh, make his life pretty easy. And he's like, dude, I don't know where I'd be <laughs> if it wasn't for all that. Because it's a struggle, man. Because, yeah. you know, I hate to say it. You don't always get all of the right information up front. Well, not all the right. You don't get a lot of information up front yeah. when it comes to getting stuff from FD. Like, you know, just like, Hey, here's your registration email register right now. I'm like, cool. I don't have the money. I, yeah, no, I, I agree. But it's also stuff. like, we're not here to hold your hand. Oh, I know. Like, no, that's no, no, the, no. that's the thing. We're professionals now. You should know. Yeah. And that's the, that was the biggest transition is just cause like, I didn't expect it. And like, now I get it. Like it's easy. It's no problem. Yeah. That's why I like try to be so helpful with those guys. Whereas like, I was just like, Oh, Okay. <laughs> I need to have how many thousands of dollars yeah, in yeah. this account by this day? Like, yeah, exactly. It was, it was wild. Yeah. And like this year was like the earliest registration that I've ever experienced as a driver. Cause obviously moving to pro and all that stuff. And I was like, Oh, different. this sucks. And it's a little more pricey too. Yeah. Yeah. Twice. You're in the, you're in the big boys now. Yeah. Pay to play baby. <sighs> so when, when did you know you're making the jump? Last like you year. talked about it for a bit. Pardon? Yeah. Last year. Like I, when I last year though? Um, I was going to go last year. I just didn't get the funding. Mm -hmm. So like I knew, like after I signed up for Prospect again, I just said to myself, I'm not doing this again. 
<laughs> like I'm, I want, and like no disrespect to prospect, like it's great. And I had loved it, but yeah. I have had a lifetime goal to go to pro and like, that's what it is for me. So I just made a promise to myself that I'm not going to let myself do it again. And I'm coming in under budget or way over budget or under budget again, but I'm just making it happen because like, this is where I want to be. And I know that like, it's the typical saying, dress for the job you want, not for the job you have. Right. Yeah. So I'm coming in and we're going to make a, make a big splash. We're going to shoot for that rookie of the year spot. And there's a lot of heavy hitters to battle Ooh, against for that. Yeah, there is. But you know, I, I, I I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that I belonged, you know, I would have yeah. never made the jump. So, but yeah, I mean, I even, I told you even on the podcast, that was the hard launch or soft yeah. launch, I guess at uh, St. Louis. No one has listened to the show back then. <laughs> no. Nah. Well, and it was like a qualifying post qualifying show too. So yeah. it was like less, even less important. So, but yeah, <laughs> the I mean, diehard was, fans was listen to those ones. Like the, I the real dieharders. Yeah. Yeah. You listen I to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Like, mom, mom, I'm on here. Yeah, no, that, that, that was it. But like, I, I talked to Andy Luck about it and he's like, you're not going up. He's like, you need to win a championship. He's like, if I see your name trying to come up there, he's like, I'm going to knock you back down. And, uh, I actually had to petition in, uh, this year because, you know, I technically got my license for pro two years ago, not this last year. Right. And so I technically had to petition in and, uh, Andy Luck sent me my approval letter and I, I responded back and was like, I didn't think you were letting me in boss. <laughs> oh, no, he's great. I love that guy. Uh, I, I still need to get him on the show for people who like, don't even, I've, I've talked about Andy so many times. That would like, be the best show yeah, ever. I think it'd be good. And Hey, this episode's within an hour. Andy told me he only listens to the first hour. He doesn't care. He's like, after an hour, I'm done with it. And I'm like, okay. So oh, Andy, yeah. what's up, buddy? He, dude, he's been sharing. Right yeah. He's been sharing so much like FD history stuff. And like, it's Being awesome. the nerd that I am right now, I'm just like, I'm like yeah. DMing. I'm like, please, can you send me copies of these? Like, when can I come to the office and see these? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's so sick. Like, whenever they gave, I think it was Vaughn and Turk their tech cards from like the first the first drift event. event. Like, that's so sick. Yeah. Like how the track kept that for so long, and like just happened to randomly stumble upon them when they were trying to throw them away. It's like that's insanity, bro. It's the defense for hoarding. Yeah, I that's guess. It. That's the defense for hoarding, <laughs> right? Guess. And it does make it really cool. And maybe there was some law behind it, but that's not important. Yeah. The important thing is that they hoarded it and kept it and it was sick. Somebody somebody held on to it and mm-hmm. then said, Yeah, bro, yeah, it's I love stuff like that. Oh yeah. Love it. it is it is really cool. Yeah, super <laughs> neat. Um, I do want to applaud you. Uh so we've made it about 40 minutes in and you have yet to apply lip chap. So I think this is a record for you. Uh thank you. I hate you so much. Is it in your pocket? Like, is it ready just, to go? I just checked. It's over there. <laughs> is it? Is it hurting a little now? Yeah, it's like when you have like Tourette's and like you like say what their Tourette's thing is, like and they have to do it. Like that's how I oh, feel the right tick, now. Yeah, yeah. You just said it, and I'm like, oh. if you want to get know. up and go, like I'm not, I'm not going to get mad. I'm good. I can, I can edit this. I'm good. <laughs> if I go hey, anywhere, man, I, it's it's good. I'm glad that you you take care of yourself sometimes. Oh, Say. Sometimes, what's the what's the hair care routine right now? Head and shoulders, really two and one. Oh, shampoo basic. and conditioner. My girlfriend absolutely roasts me about it. She's like, "How's your hair so freaking nice?" And you just use head and shoulders. It's it's BS. I'm like, I'm sorry. I just just got the gift, man. Just got the gift. Just I think it's just gift. you're not overcomplicating it. I think no. that's what it is. No, she's like, "And you wash your hair every day." I'm like. I don't get it either. I just don't get it either. Just gifted. Are we uh, Are we going to get like a nice slow motion hair flip coming at a helmet at some point Dude, this year? We got, I, we got one a couple of years ago and it went, like I, I included it in like a video and it was like actually kind of sick and yeah. it got a lot of traction. So maybe, I mean, Amanda said it best. She's like, what was it? a couple seconds of glam, a couple seconds of driving, yeah. Pfft, let the hair flow in the wind a little bit, maybe a little damp from the sweat and the helmet sweat she's she's consistently gets phenomenal views on on her videos she's got the formula i think it's time for you to jump on that i'm gonna have to give it a try i think you can you have to yeah Yeah. i mean you need to see the hair flip i think i got the longest hair in pro right yeah uh snooki ah damn it yeah he does have good hair. It's not Man's fair. Man's got good hair. He's got good hair. We're gonna have to have like some sort of. I think there. I think there needs to be some sort of like bet at some point to like someone has to shave off their hair. No shot. Yeah. 
I don't oh, have a shave head since I was like 15. Hang on. Yeah, he might have got it a chop, but I don't think it's crazy. No, it's it's always uh, Casey that always trims. He'll go like oh, this long or longer, and then he'll just yeah. shave it. I'm like, who, what? Who are you? Yeah. He like randomly showed up to an event one day without saying a word. I think it was like early, was like it. three years ago, like head shaved. I'm like, what did you do to yourself? I want to say there was an event this year he cut his hair, and I was just like, yeah. who is this Dude, guy? He looked. Like, like, you look really good. You he's look a, familiar, look, but I don't like, know. You know I didn't look good before, like in the typical Casey, <laughs> like, you know, kind of like yeah. snap back. And I'm like, no, yeah. you, uh, you always like, look good. Yeah. I'm always like, stop talking now. Yeah. <laughs> back yourself on a corner. <laughs> oh, dude. I, I foot and mouth all the time. Oh, dude. Same. All For the someone time. who says dumb stuff constantly, I'm like, how did, how did I get a show? <laughs> I eat, breathe, and sleep saying dumb stuff, man. And you <sighs> let me on here. I just got to watch my mouth I this want, entire I hour. invited you. I like. Yeah. I was like on you to come on the show. Yeah. For a long time now. You wanted me on here at the very beginning of last year and then yep. turned into, you got to win an event to get on here. And I'm like, damn. Well, dude. you went back to, that was the problem. You went back to prospect. That was my rule. That's, that is the deal. Mm. That was the rule. I don't think, I don't think We're that's live, how it's going to be this year. Yeah. I, I'm going to, I definitely want to open up to more prospect. I've had a couple yeah. prospect guys hit me up and I'm like, Hey, I got, I've got, I have kind of had a schedule built. I had like mm-hmm. a general idea of how I wanted it to go. And I'm like, Yes, but let me get through my list first and then I'll get back in touch with you. Yeah, and I mean, you can recycle drivers once the season starts and stuff because you'll have new stories and new things that are crazy and uh, like wild stuff will happen at events that you got to talk about, like fights. 100%. Yeah, some fights and stuff like that. There's some, yeah, uh, yeah, I I can't can't talk about it. There's some some interesting things in the works with – the show and, and like some access and some stuff. So there's a lot, there's a lot in the works. There's what I will say is there will be an episode with Ryan Sage coming up where we're going to kind of, there's going to be a lot that's going to get talked about. Okay. Is yeah. It about, is it about a lot of the stuff that went on in the Q1 conversation? Uh, yeah. I think the idea of that show is like, honestly, to like definitively say and talk about everything that'll be confirmed coming out of that call. Yeah. It's going to be was- a big one. It was a lot of conversation coming out. I'm excited. I, it's like it's a love hate decision for me, so I can't really comment on it because I love it and I hate it at the same time. But it's really good. I think. I feel I and I maybe like hopefully you feel the same way. Like it's so interesting to like to be a part of the sport right now because I feel like this is one of the mm-hmm. biggest like years that's that's ever happened. I think it is the biggest year because my first year in pro was at like 38, 39 drivers, which I think is similar to right now. And yeah. pro spec had 44, 45 drivers, uh, which at the time was pro too. And then I got to see COVID year happen, which was wild. Mm. Uh, and then we changed from like that weird setting to like the next weird setting. And it's, I've got to see a really weird change of FD in the last five years and this year is going to be nuts. The driver count is insane. I yeah. think the show is going to be insane. There's a lot of upgrades and stuff coming. It's it's, it's going to be yeah. so good. That's going to be good. It's the perfect I, time to go to pro. That's for sure. You definitely, honestly, like from my perspective, I mean, it's a great and terrible time because yeah. like you're, you're jumping into pro with probably one of the most competitive rookie pools we've ever seen. A hundred percent. I look yeah, at that and so. I'm disgusted. <laughs> I'm like, you, you, whoever wins rookie of the year deserves that, dude. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's a battle. But also like there's going to be a lot of eyes on the sport from all over the world this year. Yeah, so like from a per, from that perspective, I think it's really good. What do you think? So, is, is Connor coming? Man, go, I don't know. I'm going, I, I'm going with no. What I What I can say is with anybody that's been like, on if like that was on that that register list because that's all that list is. These are people that have registered a, and who are who are accepted. To be no, able to no, not registered, just accepted. Okay. Accepted. Thank you. Yeah, those are the yeah. people that that are allowed to register, Correct. if you will. Yes, thank you. I'm, thank I'm you for curious. That clarification. Yeah, well, I, yeah. well, it's like LZ's on there, and like I'm pretty certain he's not coming back this year. I'm pretty know. sure he's I, coming next year, but like I don't know. It's all rumors. You just don't know. But like I, I heard, he's not coming. Hot. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see if Darren Kelly comes back. I've heard some rumors on that, which are yeah. very interesting. Very spicy. Uh, I've heard, I, I don't know, who is it? Uh, not DMAC, uh, Bagsy. Bagsy. Is he coming? I don't know. I've heard nothing. I didn't even know he was trying to come back. I, uh, I've had some form of communication with everybody that's on that list is like all that I can say. 
I hate I, you. And so know, does I'm everyone sorry, watching right now. <laughs> I have I have been in contact in one way or another with I think everybody that's on that list. So Yeah. Man, I I've heard some wild news about a lot of the rookies. So it's uh and I and some of the the existing ones. Yeah. yeah this rookie pool makes me sick though. It makes but me like, sick in my stomach. Dude, it's gonna be it's gonna oh, be wild. This is gonna be one of the better pro years that have happened in the last few years, you know, the, yeah. the driving pool. I mean, all of the rookies coming in are pretty well respectable drivers, you know, mm-hmm. everyone coming up from prospect sick, all the people on the outer list sick here yeah. uh, or here, here. I'm not even going to try Manawa. Hero Man- Manawa. Yeah. See, I, look I, at you. You can't either. I'm, I'm, yeah. No, <laughs> try, yeah, but he's sick. Like, man, this is going to be a s- wild. I was wishing he would come last year. I was hope I wanted to see what that was all about. Yeah. I know it's a big investment to come do pro spec, but I'm I'm happy to see him moving into pro this year after his uh, after how well he did showing there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, sick. Yeah, it's going to be wild. Um, even even pro spec, like some of the guys coming back, uh, some of the guys moving up. Like, I'm very yeah. interested to see what that final five number, top five number, is going to look like this year. Because, I mean, a lot of that top tens moving up. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it. It's going to clean up a lot of like, uh, name the last time that you're, I feel like I'm overstepping here. Name the yeah. last time that this many good drivers or the top prospect drivers just moved up to pro. I can't tell you the last time. Almost every time someone gets their license, they stay down. Like Bruce, yeah. won the championship <clears throat> X amount of times, never moved yeah. up. Uh, it's a lot. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, me and Haley both stayed down last year. We were top three. Uh, Thorne was the only one to go. So it's like, even back in the day when the top eight would go up, it was very yeah. rare that you would see three drivers move up. And now this year, there's five. It's, it's going to make for some crazy brackets. That's the thing. Yeah. It's going to make for some crazy brackets. I think prediction wise, I think Long Beach is going to play out where the rookies are going to struggle. It's tough. It's very tough. It is definitely a welcome to the show. Yeah. Like you're about to get your ass handed to you no matter what. Yeah. Like, just how it is. I want to be surprised. I would absolutely love to see like a you or Dimitri or Andy or, or Ben or whoever come out and just decimate. I think I, you will hear me screaming. Like, yeah, I you, love I, folding the ass in it on walls. So you're going to give me three of them corner after corner. Yeah. It's either going to be really good or really bad. I told yeah. the boys, I'm like, I'm sorry, we're building this brand new car right now because there's a pretty good shot that we're going to make some damage to it. Yeah, I would definitely bring some extra rear bumpers. Well, about that. The way my bank account's set up, I have one. You're going to need more than that. Yeah. Or you're going to need to bring a welder. I might bring last year's back bumper and we'll just tape it together. Are you referring to metal bumpers? I meant meant like metal. Mash bars? Oh, okay. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. we'll be all right there. We'll be fine there. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, body Uh, kit wise. like I I do that myself. So like that's, yeah, that'll be fine there. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, body kit wise, you'll definitely need that. I mean, really, they just fly off after the first practice run, anyways. Yeah, so we'll just leave it. it leave it off. <laughs> that was the that was the joke I always had with like Riley Sexsmith that they like put the smallest zip ties in his rear bumper so they could just take it off after the first run and call it a weekend. Yeah, it's like it's like every run. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, who is it? Like every single Alec Honadel. Yeah, every time Alec- <laughs> that man le- gets on track, he does not have a bumper. I don't know which one, but one of them is leaving the track. Yeah. Dude, I yeah. think it was the worst round. I love He's, it though. He there's <laughs> two drivers in my mind, like in the in the like the recent 10 years that I feel like could come back and and still crush. And it's yes. him and Matt Kaufman. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even I mean, even Pat Gooden came back a couple years ago yeah. in Fields Car and was just yeah. who is this guy? He's yeah. better than when he left. It was, it was sick. the greatest race car I've ever driven. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was that was sick. It was a great interview. Alec Honadel is nuts. Yeah, I, I he just absolutely demolishes. Yeah, I'd love to see Nate Hamilton come back too. That'd be yeah. sick. I know, New I know. He's, yeah, but he's big in with Accelera, so yeah, uh, but that's hey, that would be tough. Accelera can make a move or something. That would be know. cool. I don't know how. I I honestly don't know how competitive those tires. are. I have no experience on them. I've but. never driven. I drove on a set of two thirty fives on a friend's car. And that's it. They felt good. Yeah, but that's that's all I can say. Yeah, no I think idea. it'd be cool. He's in a good spot and. He just, he actually just did a, like a, those little mini interview. I think it's like called cool down or something. Uh, uh, I can't remember the exact name of the show, but like he talked about when he was in pro, there was so many guys, it was like 60 guys or something like that. So like, he's like, yeah, it just didn't make sense. Like now though, yeah, to come back and really crush and he's been driving well. So 
Well, he was in, I guess, even before Pro 2 became a thing. Because yeah. I think my first year in Pro 2 was his last year in. I think so, yeah. I think you're right. Uh, so, yeah, he probably was in that really big driver pool. Yeah. So it, was, it was getting pretty silly. That pissed me off when they started Pro 2. Because like, I got my license like the year or like the first Pro 2 or something. Like Whenever I was finally starting to get good, they like implemented mm. like Pro 2. And I'm like, God damn it, now I have another step to take? And same thing, like you look at that that Pro 2 set of years, you're talking about guys, you know, I, I mean, we could list off all the drivers. Some of them are literally just moving up like you and Andy. Yeah. Uh, but but like that pool was nuts. That pool yeah. was absolutely nuts. And a lot of the top guys are in Pro now. Yeah. And, well, you know, we've got a couple of like other hometown heroes that were in the early Pro 2 also, like uh, Andy Lewis, David Mesker, like the old MDU Andy boys. Mesker. Yeah. Uh, but... I mean, even they've said to me, like, dude, it's not the same anymore. I'm like, no. dude, it's really, it's really not. No. Like, even like, I hate to say it, but like, pro am now is probably better than the first year of pro two. It's just yeah. this, this progressed so crazy, man. No, I would, and, I would agree. I would think, I would think pro two now is what pro was six, seven years ago. Yeah, yeah, I'm pro specs getting pretty competitive. I'm sorry, yeah, prospect. I, like, I will always yeah. confuse the two. Same, I will always same. confuse the two. I try to do my best, and I'm getting better, but man, it's yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. Ah, <sighs> sorry. I rants a lot. No, no, it's dude. It's, uh, that's what podcasts are for. Yeah. It's all about ranting. That's like the whole, the whole idea of this is just to, just to give you a spot to talk, man. I know you like to talk. I love talking. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't give me any beers. It gets worse. <laughs> hey, gets uh, worse. are you, uh, are you bringing the van back again this year? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Minivan's coming back. The micro yeah. van. Yep. Yep. It won't be direct matching to the car. It'll be last year's livery still. Uh, okay. Um, just because it's time, a big ask. time, money. Yeah. It yeah. is a big ask and you know, it's close enough still, it's, you know, schemes kind of still there. Uh, mm. but I'm really trying to see if I can get it in that long beach parade, get the boys, like give them the old beep beep on the horn. I don't know if they'll let us do it, but like, you know, I, I know, uh, like fields boys would always bring out the pit bikes and stuff. So like, yeah, it's, it's comparable I think and I like, it, it looks cool. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd be know. sweet. I would be I, sick. I, I love all those. The, the, uh, someone needs to just make a video of like the pit vehicles of, of FD. Yeah. Uh, are we past an hour? Is Andy still watching? All right, Formula Drift fans, we've got the merch deal back again. I was able to finagle my way in there, cut some deals, you know, grease some palms, all that fun stuff. So that means if you're looking for some awesome FD merch, you know what to do. Podcast 24 at checkout. Save yourself 20%. So head over to shopfd.com. Get yourself some awesome shirts and hats and stuff like that. I'm still working at the hat deal. Don't worry. We'll, we'll figure out the hat deal. But for right now, head over to shopfd.com. Save 20%, use podcast 24 at checkout. That's podcast, the number two, the number four. I don't have to spell it all out. I'm saving you a bit of time. And uh, save yourself 20%. Uh, you got four minutes. So ah, I, I, I uh, well, I'm going to risk it anyways. Last year, uh, I got into a drag race with Human, and uh, <laughs> it was, I won. We'll just leave it there. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> that's what we need. We need a halftime just, show and everyone's pit vehicles run them up, dude. What a sad drag race. Oh, it was horrible. <laughs> it was so bad. Like I dropped the clutch and like the van barely took off and it was like, Yo. was that in like, Utah? Oh. I feel like that's where it would be. Ah, Jersey. Really? That's a yeah. bold move, Cotton. It's I mean, there's bold, enough road there. You're good. Worked out for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, we were like way back in the corner. It didn't matter. No one was there. It was fun. Yeah. After was FD fun. wasn't during the sanctioning body and stuff. Yeah, right? exactly. Allegedly. There's Allegedly. no video evidence. No. Oh, there probably is a lot of that. <laughs> Jeez, I'm trying to help you here. <laughs> It was uh, after. We're fine. So I, I, I feel like the the next question is definitely a uh, a, a throwback, but it's very much relevant. Uh, and this um, this definitely feels like a maximum driftcast question. Uh, <laughs> Shouts out to those boys. But in a hot dog eating contest, who do you think you would beat, and who do you think you would lose to out of the FD driver pool right now? So I'm I know beat some of them you have beat all of them. Yeah, I lost to. Just one local boy who just like, had it figured out. Mm. And I don't know. I mean, I I haven't been eating a lot of hot dogs these days, but I could come out of the woodwork for a hot dog eating contest. I'll train it up again. You uh you going back to the fitness days? Probably not. 
No, I wasn't no. sure if you were like trying to get back in shape. No, I, I am. I, I've got every excuse in the world. You know, I was in pretty good shape for a hot minute and then, you know, yeah. life happened, bush lights happen. And, you know, like I said, I go to work at eight to five and I'm at my shop from five 30 to 10 30 every single day. So like, I know it's an excuse. Yeah. Get up and go to a gym before work Derek. Like that sucks. But you know, the, the tried and true conversation of Matt Field's success and Turk's success yeah. after being in shape. Vaughn. Vaughn. I mean, Same Ken, thing. Ken Block did it. Like all these yeah. dudes are, I mean, you, even the F1 guys, they're in the gym hard every day. And I believe that there's a true testament to that. So, you know, um, I'm about to move somewhere where there's a basement. So I'm going to like try to set up a little home gym and make a habit from like day one of moving in to where I have the option. Um, to start working out every day before work. Just fuck, even if it's 20 minutes, man. I yeah. don't know. Healthy breakfast, quick workout, make me feel good for the day. Fit in my fire suit again for last year. Stuff. <laughs> That's the I'll, uh, I'll, I'll ship you out a, a case of the Advocare Spark. We'll get you on the 24 day yes. program and you'll yeah. be right back down there. That, that's it, dude. That's the move. That was the, that was the, what do you call it? I don't know. That's the money move. The special. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> It works. You want to ship me some it works while we're at it? Uh, yeah. Is that, is that what kicked you off in sales is getting into the multi-level marketing dude, I, supplement I, industry? I got roped into that. My friend told me it was a good idea. It was not a good idea. Is it Drew? Are we, are we calling it Drew on this one? Huh? No. Oh, okay. Uh, but no, I, actually, I was a big O'Reilly's guy, man, from day one. Mm. O'Reilly sales guy. It dug gotcha. me in. Selling auto parts since day one. Did you ask if the truck was four wheel drive before they could get wiper blades? Dude, one time. So like I've always, <laughs> I've always been, so that's a big common thing with AutoZone because like their, their system self-populates the dumbest questions. Well, so does O'Reilly's it self-populates that shit. But right. like one day I like, I've always known cars and a guy asked me for a clutch and this system pops up automatic or manual. I'm searching for a clutch set. Like, yeah. come on. But me and my like zoned in like ugh, it's hour seven of the day and I'm like automatic. Uh, <laughs> pretend I didn't say that. And he's like, what did you just say? I was like, nothing. 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 Just not getting into it. Yeah. So that did happen once, but no, I'm, I'm, I was never that bad. Never right. that bad. I've seen it happen. I actually had a customer ask another coworker what an air cleaner was. And he goes, what's an air cleaner? I said, it's an air filter, dude. I'm like, come on. It was tough working there. That's what old people call it. It was tough. <laughs> tough sometimes. <sighs> On to bigger and better things now, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Being uh, fuel lab sick. I like working there. Yeah. Do fun. you enjoy the the sales life? It's like, it's such a, I feel like it gets such a mystique around people. Like, oh, it must be great <clears throat> to be a salesman. You're like, it could be one of the most depressing jobs ever. Yeah, it is for not sure. easy. <laughs> for sure. And it's like, and then you got to be that guy that's like, Hey buddy, I exist. Do you want to buy from me now? And yeah. like, you got to be that annoying guy sometimes. But like, luckily, uh, like I said, there's only 10 of us. So I wear a lot of hats. You know, I do uh, a lot of like the web stuff, like on the back end, like fixing stuff, changing stuff. Uh, I run our laser engraver and do a lot of like the program of that stuff in house, like set stuff up. I helped not design per se, but like our most recent fuel pump. Uh, we just came out with an 1100 liter per hour, one pump option. Like, which is Jesus, two times the next biggest, you know? And uh, I helped bring that into play, you know? Like, mm. Tanner had been kind of talking about like another company that did something similar. I'm like, let's try this because I bet it'll work and then we can do it the right way. And we sketchily like made it work. And I was like, here's how we do it the right way. And now we have like the baddest pump on the market because me and one other guy were like, hey, let's do this. So it's like, it's cool to have that kind of an impact in like a small company to where like, you know, all I got to do is make a suggestion. And next thing you know, like you could have the best thing and it could be not because you designed it, but because like you proposed an idea. That's sick. I love that. Yeah. That's, uh, that's it's pretty wild. Fun. Yeah. It's fun as hell to work there for that that's reason. Good, man. Exactly. And it like, it kind of gives that allowance and that understanding too, that like you're running FD. Yeah. Right? Like yeah, that to was try my... and find, just find a job that like allows yeah. you to do this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in Prospect, I, I was at O'Reilly's and I was a manager of a hub store, which, so if you don't know anything about parts stores, that's like the, f the part store that's big enough to feed all of the other stores around you, 10 stores okay. around you. So it's like 
the most important store. And I had three and a half weeks vacation and leaving was a nightmare. My boss hated it. His boss hated it. All my employees hated it. Uh, and it was tough. Uh, but it, uh, it did allow me the freedom to like stretch it out and, and get out of there. So like when I came to fuel lab in my interview, I was like, I am going to go pro in probably two years and I need to be able to do that. And he's like, okay, I hate it, but I love it. You know? So. Yeah. But I mean, you're, you're an advocate for the brands. I mean, exactly. you're, you're still doing other stuff. Like I feel like you're maybe the stuff at the shop that you have to do. Obviously that kind of gets put on pause, yeah. but like ultimately you're still doing sales. While yeah. You're there. I'm the, the prime customer service guy. So other people <laughs> got to lean in on that, which kind of sucks. Uh, and I, I do take a lot of like, I take every phone call actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they do have to work a little bit harder when it comes to that, but I'm very knowledgeable on the brand and all that. So when I'm out in the field, like I remember my first year being sponsored by and people would come up and ask me questions. I'm like, I really don't know. Here's a catalog. <laughs> and like now it's like, oh, you have, you have this question? Like in Utah, like several of the other drivers run our stuff and they like all had is- issues, but it wasn't directly with the product. It was like with something else that was going on and I was I able to diagnose it like altitude right there. stuff, right? Yeah, you never know. I mean, I think one of them had a shortened wiring. Two of them actually mm. had shortened wiring and another one had like <clears throat> some other failure that kind of led into it. So it was, but it was just nice to be able to figure stuff out, diagnose, tell people the right things to do, right things to try. So and that's good to have out in the market. So like, yeah. even if a fan came up, like a fan might own a race shop. That's the cool thing about FD is the fans are going to come up and talk to you and I can like sell them on the brand. It happens almost every round. I mean, you tried with me too. I, I you like wrote me in there. You're like at the buy booth. My stuff. Came in. Buy yeah, my stuff. Buy my stuff. Yeah, yeah. You're complimenting the new website though. Yeah. It's hey, better. I'm uh that's, that's, that's my jam. Yeah. I was doing some work with, uh, man, it's so hard sometimes. Uh, I was having a conversation with somebody today. It's like drift adjacent and uh, we we're working on a project and not like through my actual work, through like a personal project. Mm-hmm. And I found like a bunch of web dev stuff. I'm like, Hey man, I don't want to be a dick, but you definitely need to fix these things. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> hey, <laughs> not yet. Uh, don't, don't pick me out yet. No, no. It's just, I, it just doesn't turn off for me. Yeah. No, I, understand I just don't that. Like any website I go on, any email, marketing email I receive, social media posts, like I'm just, I'm just always looking at it and analyzing it and being like, what were they thinking? Or like, what were they thinking? Yeah. Like, it's one of the two. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you look at mine, it's probably going to be like, oh, what is this? Cause like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm computer illiterate and I just use Shopify, but we made it happen. We're there. Dude, we'll, we'll Shopify grow. the way to go. We'll grow. I, I'll tell you right now. Like if, if you need to build, if you need to sell product, Shopify is the way to go. It's been great. You know, my first couple of sales were like overseas and like one of them was great. And the other two were like, ah, big red flags don't send. And like, it was Mm -hmm. like, you know, $1,200 parts, you know? So it's like, it was, uh, it was nice to have that red flag because if they charge back me, I'm screwed. Yeah. I haven't been burned yet. Shout out IG Motorsports then? Yeah, dude. Shout out IG Motorsports. So if you guys need parts for your drift car. Is that, is that it? IGmotorsports.com? Yeah. Remember, this is some people just listen. They don't look. <laughs> oh, dang, dude. Sorry. IGmotorsports.com. It's my co-title. Uh, I, I own it. It's my own version of like your drift parts, your, your favorite drift parts shop. I'm not going to name drop against myself here. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. That's good. I almost did it. I almost did it. That's, it's important to have that, that side hustle too. I mean, I tell yeah. drivers all the time, like you should be opening a corporation for your racing program. Yeah. Like, and it's I'm not, perfect. It's not tax advice, not legal advice. Let me just like disclaimer that, but like, yeah, but at the end of the day, your, your race program is a business. So yeah, you need to treat it like one. It's, an, it's a business expense whenever you're not making money, which I'm not. So it's like, Hey, I got that going for me. And, um, it just kind of worked out. Something I've always wanted to do, you know, like I said, I've been a parts guy my entire life. I've yeah, you know, sleep and everything parts and I love drifting. So why not like get into my own thing? I'm like, I've built my race car in my parents' garage for like my first three years of FD and it's like not that big. So, um, I now have a race shop. So like my goal is to like have IG motorsports pay for the shop and I could me wrong. Like I rent it with homies. So it's like not expensive yeah. and like where we're at rent is nothing comparable to a lot of areas, but you know, I, as long as IG Motorsports pays my share of the shop or God forbid people move out and I got to pay for the whole thing, even better. Like yeah. that's, 
that's the goal. I don't, I don't, I don't need to get rich off of it. That'd be sick. But as long as it just kind of, that's how it starts though. Like, I think that's what yeah, people for sure. forget about. They like look at companies and they're like, Oh yeah, I could never do that. Well, I mean, none of at, these brands started huge. Yeah. Look at Josiah, man. He was just on a podcast the other day talking and yeah. he was like, yeah, dude, I just started making roll cages in my garage. And now he has like one of the biggest drift brands in the in North America. It's insanity. I, I might have to like fact check myself on this one. I, toured FDF very, very early. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, both Canadians, both drifted the same track. We just happened, you know, I was making videos a lot. He was cool. Still is cool. But like, you know, so I, I went and toured it and I, I'm fairly certain I have like a video of like the first Mega Mantis kit. That's sick. Like yeah. actually really sick. I want it. I have to go back and double check <clears throat> this. It's like on my old channel. It's me touring FDF. It is, it is very early when he was still sharing a section of the shop with his brother and like, yeah, that's I've, I've known the dude for, for you, not ever, you, but like since then. Do you want to speculate with me? Sure. Josiah, please don't get bad at me. I'm sorry. I love you. Uh, he was talking on his last, uh, last podcast that he would love to move to the U S at some point. Yeah. I bet you in the next 365, he's at the LZ compound. That's speculation. I know nothing. I have not talked to him, but if you think about it, yeah, Drift, Drift HQ is like his biggest, I think, sales outlet. I'm pretty sure. Like they I do would, all kinds of collaborations. He was their title sponsor, or they were his title sponsor. And yeah. FD, I don't know. He wants to move to the U.S. It just makes sense. Some good tax benefits in Florida. I I wouldn't be shocked. I actually, I have no idea. I mean, I don't either. But I'd be <sighs> realistically sick. speaking, if you're looking for like tax benefits for business, there's some other states that could be better. Uh, it just depends, and like. The, then the question is like, do you, do you go to Florida and sit next to your biggest distribution hub or do you go Northwest? Um, I think, I mean, Delaware is not like Delaware. Super Northwest, but like Delaware, Delaware is super low state taxes. Cheapest There's state a, of incorporation as well. So you go there, it sucks because you live in Delaware. No offense to people <laughs> who live in Delaware. True. But then now you cover North, you cover Southeast and Northwest. I mean, that's, I don't know. that's my business mindset. That's, that's what I would be thinking. Yeah. Right? Is there drifting in Delaware? There has I, to be. I know, I know I'm upsetting people. I mean, I, like, know I know it's Connecticut. A, like, I know it's an ignorant statement, but like, I don't know. Wait, no, there was somebody recently who was like, I'm the first, I want to say like prospect driver from Delaware. Oh, huh. man, I feel like a dink. Dang, dude. How dare <laughs> you? Might have been Delaware. Maybe it was Connecticut. Uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, I know, uh, like... Jimmy Oaks and all those, those boys things. always go up in, in Connecticut, but I don't know if it's like technically Connecticut, Delaware, or like what? There's a lot going on around there and they're all Not too close together for me to figure out. Listen, listen, if you drift in Delaware, drop a comment. Let us know. Hit me up. Get mad at me. That's fine. Invite me out to a drift event. Don't get mad at me. No, don't get mad, Derek. You can get mad at me though. Definitely. Giving you permission. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have okay. that many haters. Someone, a few. someone let me borrow a car for you guys. If there's drift events in Delaware, I'll come out. Someone let Are me you? borrow a car. Are you excited for like that part of moving to pro? Like, is that like worry? Like not that like people are just going to like invite you out to things, but like there's almost like an inherent respect that just like happens the moment you move into pro. You yeah. Know what I mean, like, is that, is that, have you even dealt with any of those thoughts or feelings yet? Yeah. Is that yeah, I have, you know, like I met some boys, um, in when I, or my early prospect days and that kind of happened like one time, like, um, I met some boys in Vegas, um, uh, Kyler, Ryan, Martin and Ryan, they used to run Nola Motorsports Park, like back before okay. it got shut down drifting. And like Ryan had me come out after PRI and like for, uh, end of year bash, uh, and had me drive his car. And I like, I was just like, dang dude. And it's like, I don't think it was because I was important by any means. We just hung out in Vegas at SEMA the whole time. And, uh, but like, that was the idea in my head of like, oh, like, because I've met people now I'm going places and driving people's cars or like whatever. And like, mm -hmm. I see things like where back in the day, like people were going to China to do that drift series or Japan, like people are going to South America and like, dude, that's sick. Yeah. I definitely want to do that. And like all the boys in Europe right now. Yeah. That's sick. I want to be there too. So like, I am definitely excited for stuff like that. Just like getting the, not, it's not even like I want people to be like, yo, come drive my car. I just want the invite to be there, you know? Yeah. And that's the kind of opportunity that I'm looking forward to. Be, it's just like, awesome. 
an elevated company. Is, yeah. I, I don't know how else to put it. Like, no matter how I put this, it's going to sound shitty, but it's yeah. like, we're you, not you better make it than into you. that group. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, that's not the case, but it's like, you make the, so you've met, you've obviously met like basically everybody in pro. Sure. Right? Yeah. Right. In, in some capacity, you've said yeah. hi or whatever. Yeah. Definitely. But, you know, you probably only have a tight relationship with a handful of those, those drivers. Yeah, exactly. And most of them were in prospect with me. <laughs> right. Right. And they just, they just made the jump before you did. But then yeah. when you kind of get into that circle, you just, you, you have connections you've never had before. Right. Right. And there's discussions that you can have that are now because you're a peer that are different. And like, like yeah. that really is, there's no way of making me just not sound pretentious about this whole thing. But yeah, like, it's just, that's how it is. It is, but like, it's like moving same, to high school. It's like moving to high school from public school. That's, you pretty, know, some high that's, schoolers. That's pretty right? fair. That's right? pretty you fair. You know, some high schoolers, but now you are a high schooler. Well, if you look at it from this track, like pro spec is on track, pros in the pits. Pros are on yeah. track, prospects in the pits. So there's never like a chance for you to connect really anyways, aside yeah. from the mutual respect of being a peer instead of like, quote unquote, below the pros, which is sometimes that's how I felt down in prospect. Uh, yeah. But like, yeah, no, like I get it. And you also have more opportunity to like converse, you know, mm. like you're on the separate side of the pits with the pros versus being over with the prospect guys. Cause it is kind of, it's not fully divided, but there's a, there's a divvy for sure. Yeah. There's, there's, something to it. I mean, they're going yeah. to get the better spots. They're going to sit in, you know, that's what the and, people and are a lot of times, it, a lot of the times it makes it like mixes things up. I mean, easy life hack. If you're a pro, if you're going into pro spec and you can partner with a pro driver, you will automatically get a better parking spot. Shout out. Cody, what's up? You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously though. I mean, like yeah. it's, it's a good hack. Yeah. You're going to be in a good pit space. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like, that's what like, it was, it was pretty awesome. Like just a couple of years ago when people were starting to like team up with all those guys and then they, the pro crowd got small enough that like top five of pro spec was like over with the pros too. And that was kind of tight too. And it's a good mm -hmm. little mix. It's like a goal to get into that side of the pits too. It's like, yeah, it should be on and off though. the track. Oh, for sure. And then you get like more interaction from the fans, better opportunity to sell shirts, merch, whatever, and like meet more people. I don't know. That's yeah. cool. I think I think like the pit activation itself is the biggest missed opportunity when it comes to to young drivers. For sure. Or like drivers just getting in. Dude, you know who rips at that? Nate Chen. Yeah. <sighs> He's so good. Yeah. So good. He's on all the yeah. time. Yeah. Just just constantly on, talking to everybody, getting people in, doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Like And yeah. it's it, it's just wild. It's wild. And like he turns it on turns the switch on and like all of a sudden he's just MC. MC Nate Chen. Yeah. MC and C. Full race suit up on top of yep. the rig. Not even a prospect pro weekend. Only event. Guys, pro only event. Nate's got his race suit. Like, yeah, I went to Seattle for work, and he's like, "Yo, dude." He's like, "You wanna, you wanna get up here?" I was like, "Yeah." Oh, I forgot dude. you were up there. Yeah, I was like, "I'm also not in pro, but we're here." And yeah, oh, dude, fans didn't know. Fans didn't care. They were yeah. just like, "Yo, this is cool." There's people up here talking, and, and they're throwing out free stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I'll listen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was sick. Ah, do you, uh, do you, do you still get some PTSD with Seattle? Yeah. Are you like, are you ready to face that track again? I'm not. Like, no? I'm more scared to go back to Seattle than I am to go to Long Beach. Really? And I'm good at bank tracks now. And I'm just, mm. can we, mm. for people who don't know, do you want to, do you want, let's, let's open up therapy here. You want to talk about the past? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> um, my second year in pro two, um, Fun fact, my first year in Pro 2, uh, it was top 16 only. I qualified zero times. I got like 18th to 20th qualifying spot every time. You didn't qualify at that back then. So my first year battling was in COVID year when they didn't have qualifying. And my second event, Seattle, it's raining. First time driving a, that fast of a bank. It's crazy fast. It's bigger than it looks. Even in the rain, it's fast. It's fast in the rain. Yeah. yeah. Um, I... Went into the wall with the rear end, not with the front, but close enough. And one of the signs came off of the wall because they all kind of shake as you drive by if you look real close. And one of the pieces of wood came out, hit the A pillar of my car, went in through the driver's window, hit my seat bolster, went out the back window, shattered my back glass because I still had a, a full rear glass. And like I had like a hard 90 bend on my rear firewall and it like dented the crap out of it. And if you've ever done metal work to know what a hard 90 feels like, you can't dent them very easily. 
like this wood was like hanging out my window and uh, it was Mike Weber. I'm pretty sure comes running over to the car. I think that's who it was. Comes running over to the car. And like, mm. I, th- he, I think he thought I was dead. Cause like I, <laughs> at this point, I didn't realize that the wood even came in. I didn't see it. So fast. No, mm. it was, yeah, so fast. And he pulls it out of my driver's window from behind my seat. And he was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm good. And I just drove off the track and like, whatever. But it was like a big thing and it shut the track down for, probably 30 minutes so I could take the sign completely down. Yeah. I'm good at shutting tracks down. I shut the track down in St. Louis qualifying this year too. Did you? Yeah. I ripped up one of the Oh, you ripped up the rumble strip. (laughs) Yeah. And it ripped my bumper off and they like deducted me a bunch (laughs) of points. I'm like, this bullshit. Yeah. I'm just shutting down tracks everywhere, dude. She caused a riot, man. In the worst ways. Yeah. I can break anything. I promise. I can break anything. <laughs> oh, can that? Oh, we got to get that in your driver profile, dude. Like I, that's got to live somewhere. I can break driver anything. bio. Please, have you already <laughs> submitted it? Nope. No. Nope. Oh, you're probably late on that too. Hey, whoa! <laughs> God dang! You know it's funny. Uh, uh, I, I actually planned ahead. This is the first year that I've ever like done my physical before the due date. Okay. Fun fact, you have to have a driver's physical to drive FD. I yeah. did it. This is the first time I've ever gotten the appointment done before the due date. And it's been like a month and I still haven't put it in. I'm like, damn, dude, you're just, you can't Bro. not be late for stuff. <laughs> Bro. Pictures are on my phone already and everything ready to upload. I haven't done it. I'm doing my best, all right? No, I'm not. <sighs> what are we going to do with me? I have no idea. You Nothing. you still one of like the most entertaining people I talk to. Yeah, dude, you just never know what's going to come out of my mouth, what's going to happen. That's I just keeps it interesting. You do. You definitely you keep it spicy. Yeah. Definitely I'm, keep it I'm spicy. being very well behaved today. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about it. We did yeah. a little prep plan. Got, yeah. Got everything got everything settled, went through the plan of attack. No adult beverages on screen. No. <laughs> no. I don't care. I I maybe dude, FD would have cared. I don't think they would because not because of that, but like I asked Kevin if I, and this was years ago, so it might've changed if I could get a alcohol sponsor. Cause I had one on the hook because okay. a family friend like worked or like worked for the president of like a local distributor. And it okay. was like a done deal, but it was COVID year. And like, it was, it was the perfect know. year to sponsor somebody. Everyone was drinking. Well, it was before it happened. And then it happened and then the deal went, just disappeared and like never had anything since like, I mean, I don't know if it was a done deal, but in my head it was a done deal. And I was like, sick dude, like I'm changing beers to this one and that's going to be my personality from here out. So I, like, hope, it, I hope it was Schlitz. <laughs> dude, no, it was Bush Light, which is my beer of choice now. Wow. Dude, I could have been, been the Bush Light guy in FD. I'm still, you- I still shoot my shot every year. It fits though. Like Bush like that's that's the fit. Corn can car, dude? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it. I I'll, bet you would. I'll change change uh liveries to like all of the temporary cans throughout the year for every like That'd round. Be cool. like, every round? Orange that's, camo one round. I ask hate, Turk about I that. It, ask, but, ask how much Turk enjoyed that. Dude, I would literally blow my brains out if I had to <laughs> You know how much car prep happens between rounds? A lot. Yeah. And now I have to do yeah. a livery swap too. No shot, dude. Yeah, that's they're a probably lot. doing that in the pits because I mean, I guess if you think about it, he was probably in a semi with somebody. Uh, I'm trying to remember when he did it. I mean, it would have been the eight six. They did. They do. There's a couple guys that do livery swaps halfway through the year. Dylan did it. Mm-hmm. Did a livery swap halfway through. Well, and he Turk did, it, did with it. He who will not be named. They did it like every round, but luckily yeah. his brother was doing them, so he oh, had that right. going for him. Yeah, he who will not be named. No. I'm not going to be mean, but no, I know what you're saying. He's oh, the Lord man. Voldemort of the drifting world, dude. <laughs> uh, it takes a lot to throw me off. You got me there. You got me there. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, oh yeah. I could see. I mean, that would be sweet. I think, I think they give you enough money too, that you could justify having a livery swap every time. Yeah, dude. I mean, honestly, they could just ship me a pallet and like a couple of G's. I'd be stoked. 
<laughs> just the expense it would save in itself is worth That's it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know. If you just paid into your drifting program what you would have paid for beer and just Bar drank tabs, the beer. Too. It's over. Yeah. I'd be my own title sponsor. I wonder if you could get it. I wonder if you could get it in bulk in the like in the distribution cases, right? The unlabeled cases that mm-hmm. just say like bush light on the side. And then I don't know what the laws are in your area, which I feel like your state is like, anyways. Uh trash. There's Okay. Uh, but I wonder if you could then become a distributor for them and then sell those to restaurants and that's how you make your money. Well, there is one bias. That's the problem. Mm. Cause yes, but it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We're like, you're only allowed like a region. It's very regional. Oh, okay. So, so like they have distributors yeah. like that are keyed into that area. Yep. And like, they're like if there's already one, sorry, buddy. Mm. Otherwise I would be so on board, dude. Just get a couple of restaurants. You'd be making money, I'm sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or we can I just, couldn't see FD having any problem with it with an alcohol sponsor, though. Dude, I'll just Andy pr- George had a cannabis sponsor like years ago. Yeah, but I heard they shut that down. But then Talaska come in with uh, Med Meridian. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know that stuff. I'm just going to private label some. Should be there DMAD 27 light. I, that's, I've, yeah, yeah. Just or just, label it. just, mad, just mad light. Mad light. Mad like light that. beer. I just watched a whole uh, a whole documentary on Four Loco. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a Four Loco, dude. Oh man, it was uh, it was real interesting. It was I, real interesting. I didn't know it existed anymore, and I saw one at a gas station the other day, and I was intrigued. It just doesn't have all the good stuff. It's just See, alcohol in a can now. It doesn't I, have the Garano and all. That I didn't stuff. drink till I was twenty one because I was a good kid, so I missed the good part of Four Loco. Uh, so I'm like, it's like, dude. Misty, Bro, I, I, I will era. say though, you're you you did have a, a crazy collection of Arizona iced tea and Kool Aid quenchers. Uh, dude, was, that uh, spread was pretty crazy. I was in L.A. and they sold like all of them, so I was like, Pfft. yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take them all. Yeah, yeah, love it was like love seven a party, bucks. Love a party photo, just Kool Aid yeah. quenchers on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's Arizona brand. Come on, there we go, new title sponsor. I dude, someone's got to jump on Arizona by the hood. nine cents at a time by the hood. Yeah. So, uh, as a, as a Midwest boy, and I know your deep, dark secret is Midwest emo. Yeah. Can you explain to me why the band modern baseball doesn't get enough respect? No, no microwave, all this mom jeans. I guess those get a little bit more, but I don't know. I listen to modern baseball, but not a lot. No. I figured I figured you'd be like all over that graduation song. More Paramore, right? Paramore's good. That's yeah. classic though. Like that's that's to it's the not, point where it's, it's, a, a, it's a it's a fad now, you know. Yeah. Now it's on TikTok all over the place. It's like you had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh. it's it's too mainstream when Paramore becomes too mainstream. I mean yeah. it was kind of mainstream when it came out anyways. It was, yeah. I don't know. I wasn't a huge emo kid in my younger age. So I'm, I'm more of an, an an elder emo as they call us. You've kind of come so. into it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I was a little preppy kid in high school. Hundred percent. White tuxedos and flow haircuts, man. Dude, I had a shaved head. I did have a flow haircut for a while. You did have a flow haircut for the white for tux a was a move though, dude. I thought I was cooler and shit. I had a nice white warrior hockey flat bill i wore to a school dance once damn my cool warrior cat. too yeah that's yep so. i uh i went to a total hockey and uh they're like if you give us whatever random haircut of our choice we'll give you this free hat and we'll let okay. you get in the money box and you can spend the money box on anything in the store and i got like 140 dollars out of the money box they shaved a yarmulke in my head and gave me a free warrior hat and like a really expensive like CCM jacket. I was like, so cool, baby. Shave the rest yeah, off. That's yeah. exactly what I did. I was like, you guys have no idea that I've already had a shaved head. I'm not scared of this. This isn't that big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> Come up. Ah, now it's now it's all about the the long hair. What would, what would it take to, to shave it off? Dude. I don't know. I mean, I, I, a, a sponsor would have to come in with some real dollars to talk me if into you get rookie, If you get rookie of the year, will you shave it off? No, dude. I'm getting rookie of the year anyways. I'm, like, I'm not shaving it. I, I got to think of something here. I got to set some stakes here so I can come back at the end of the year and be like, Yeah, but uh, if I win, I can't. That's like. Okay, if you don't get rookie of the year, you shave it off? Whoa, now we're really pumping the brakes. Hey, man, dude. you want to you wanna be competitive. I, don't, I can't do it. I can't, no? dude. I'm scared. And like the beard I've had since I was able to grow it, never shaved it. 
I can't no. do that either. It's nice I, as long as it's gotten. <laughs> yeah. I've trimmed it. Way. Okay. I've just never deleted it. Gotcha. Never deleted it. Never deleted it. It's just, you know, it gets backspaced a little bit. There you go. <sighs> I don't know. Just a big, big hairy man. That's all. <laughs> It's it's anybody who who's struggled growing a beard when they're younger. It's like super difficult to to want to get rid of it now. Like, yeah, dude, this is like, I like, I can't grow facial hair. I went to one. Of, have you ever been to Dick's Last Resort? Once. Where they just roast you on the hat. I'm like, yeah, she said some real mean things about my beard. <laughs> I was sad. I was like, all right, I'm doing my best. Okay. Ah, <sighs> I love that restaurant though because you can just roast your server back. Yeah, that's that's the kind of the nice thing. Yeah, you can sweet. throw it back, but then you understand that like they're professional insulters. So no matter oh, what yeah. you say, they're, they're way better win. at it. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Me and, and Ricky, they'll, they'll go deep. Me and Ricky Hoffman were like roasting our server, and she like literally took his drink from him and like took it across the the restaurant and sat it on a random table, and he's like, "I'm not paying for that." <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. We just roast her, and she finally brought it back to him. Oh. Uh, Oh, poor Ricky. Yeah, dude. <laughs> we piss a lot of people off in Vegas. It's fine. Ah, uh, it's I, I'm not gonna condone it. I'm not a I'm not a big Vegas guy. I'm not either, but like <laughs> when I'm there, I do Vegas give in things. to the alcoholic beverages. Mm. Yeah. I'm uh I'm I'm all about the cigars when I'm in Vegas. See, I'm not a smoker, so Okay. Can't. No. I just drink a lot of beer. I make up for everything I don't do with bush light intake. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, dude. Vegas is just bright all the time, so you just always feel like it's daytime. You just never get tired. It's weird. There's always that rumor that like pump oxygen into the into the casinos to keep you awake. Hmm. Never heard that one. No, but it makes mm. a lot of sense. Yeah. And then like we always go to Fremont Street because it's entertaining and like mm. it's like the lights just, are on all the time just to spectate. Yeah, like the exactly. Human, just humans. It's just weird. It's a human yeah. zoo. Uh, one of my boys kicked that guy in the nuts. Yeah, you, know, you ever seen that? There's a dude no. who walks around with a sign says, kick me in the nuts for 20 bucks. And uh, we went there and he was gone. So we found a magician and we had to pay him $120 so he could get kicked in the nuts. It was sick. If you want to see it? It's one of my early TikTok videos. You managed to talk someone who doesn't get kicked in the nuts for a living to be paid enough to get kicked in the nuts. Yeah, dude. And he waddled off the strip immediately. He's like, he just gave us a magician bow and he was done. It was just like gone. But he had 120 bucks and it's probably the day's work. You know, it's honest work. That's, it's honest work. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. It's a it just cost story. like six people $20 instead of one person. Fire my researcher for not finding that. Jeez. Dude. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're slacking. Apparently, yeah, I'm just digging digging in the wrong spots, man. Yeah, asking you Midwest emo questions. Maybe talking about kicking random magicians in the I, nuts, dude. My day list is like Midwest emo playlists all day, every day. Yeah, your coworkers have been complaining. That's where I got that Prob- info from. Probably, yeah, yeah. Every time I go to the shop after work, they're like, "Dude, do you play anything different?" I'm like, no, get over <laughs> it. I'm sad. So are you now? Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm like that dude that's just absolutely vibing, listening to sad music. I'm just like, mm. this, this is the best day ever. What What are you into right now, though? Like, what are you actually listening to? I don't know, dude. It's like just the typical stuff that just replays all the time. Like, <sighs> what song do you think has the most plays right now? Ooh. God, I'm drawing a blank on the freaking band name. <laughs> They just resurfaced on my stuff. I don't know. I just listen. I don't ever look at it. So like, I just. Okay. Um, the nice. Hana. You ever heard of the Hana? They're not really Midwest emo, but the it's hun- like it, the, the Hana. Uh, H-U-N-N-A. I don't know. They just like randomly popped back up onto my stuff and just, I don't know why, but started playing all the time. Cause I just let Dayless take over. I don't do it, gotcha. but it is, it is sick. I don't know. I, I think Knuckle Puck just came out with a, a new album relatively recently, so it's been flooding the flooding playlists. Um, and when Toby Keith passed away, I uh, of course I was at the shop fabricating by myself, and uh, I just let it rip. And I had my girlfriend come up to the shop, and we were just having a ball. So now, now old mom country pops up onto the playlist every now and then. I don't hate it. Old mom, I'll, I'll take it. I don't hate it. 
let's have a party. I, yeah. Dude, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm very universal when it comes to music. I can listen to anything and I probably know the words. I probably don't know the song name or the band, but uh, yeah. Can, de- can definitely like fake it at karaoke. Oh, I could absolutely wreck karaoke to most yeah. things. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm good at it, but ah. I'll, I'll wreck it. There, There is like what seems to be an unofficial you know, party after the FD year end banquet, which does turn into karaoke. Oh, I was there were two you? years ago. Yeah. Oh, two years ago. Okay. Two years I thought ago. you were there this year. No, this last year. No, well, we, we went to the same place. Um, and it was like, I don't know, all the usual suspects you would, you would imagine. And we just had yeah. a freaking blast and they finally kicked us out. Stuki literally bought, I think it was Medellos and he bought like the, a tray full, like, you know, like the bus boy trays. Yeah like full of beers and just brought it into the room. I was like, dude, you're the man. There was uh there's very like, obviously I've had quite a lot of pinch me moments mm-hmm. in, uh, in this past year for just all the reasons. Yeah. Uh, but sure. one of them was, was definitely karaoke. And I think it was Matt field and Chelsea Denofa And I, I don't even remember mm-hmm. the song. It was like green day or something. And all yeah. three of us just belting. And I'm like, what is going on right now? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It was the same thing as like me, me, Jeff Jones, Chelsea, Osbo, like all yeah. in there just ripping. I think I did a song with Chelsea, uh, or at least like a little bit of it. Cause people were just handing mics around and like just yeah. screaming old gangster rap songs. Um, and it was a blast. I loved it. Yeah. And then in the other room was like field and a few other guys like Stuky, all those guys. And we just kind of went back and forth room to room. It was so sick. I did the same thing. I just hopped around. It was good. Yeah. It's good. It's like that camaraderie stuff that like people don't obviously like the general public just doesn't understand. I mean, they do now, but like, yeah, just the hangouts is like, like it's so different. I don't, I don't know how to explain Like the racing mm-hmm. is cool. The pits are cool. Like the pits is like kind of like a family reunion, every event. Yeah. The event is, is super intense. It's, it's crazy high stress. Like it's a lot of tension you know, you can feel it. Like you can feel it. It's, oh yeah. I could, I could close my eyes and know that I'm walking into the pits. Like there's just something about it, but then like kind of when it's over, it's, it's like this massive exhale and everybody's doing it. And like, some people are still mad and some people are excited and some people are disappointed. Yeah. There's just, like this exhale. And then like everyone gets together and it's, it's yeah. just like, I after don't want to say Utah? magic, but it's like, yeah. After Utah, even after Jersey, Jersey is so much fun, man. Yeah, everybody goes to the to sneaky pizza afterwards and stuff, and just like let's yeah. loose. And like, I think I left at like five a.m. this year, and there was still like a hundred people. I was like, go to bed, dude. I'm tired. There's uh, yeah, yeah. I I have this this w- thing with Jersey. Okay, so do you know the band Lorna Shore? No. Okay, I probably know it. Just don't know the name. Probably heard all uh, the songs. Pretty, pretty aggressive death metal stuff. No, don't know it then. Okay. Lead singer, guy named Will Ramos. Um, incredible vocalist. Arguably one of the best right now in like metal vocals. Just incredible. Little guy. Crazy sounds out of his face. Got into drifting. And like, yes, I'm a, I, was, I was a huge Will Ramos fan even before he got in with this band and kind of blew up. Like I'm, I'm, that, I'm being that guy right now. I'm like, yeah. who's the fan? Before I, was, it was I liked cool. him before he was cool. Yeah. I'm being that guy right now. He got into drifting and like he's in New Jersey. So he goes to New Jersey and goes driving and I like see his story and I'm like messaging Chris Snap and I'm like, Find this Will man. Ramos set your racetrack right now. He's like, I don't know who that is. I'm like, <laughs> he's covered in tattoos. He's got giant pierce. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah. I was chatting with him. Great guy. I'm like, Chris knows everyone. I need an introduction. I'm like, I've never asked for this in my entire life. I just, I need to find a way to meet this guy. Now I'm fanboying. <laughs> like, yeah. Dude, full, full fanboy, full fanboy. Like, dude. I'm, yeah, I'm buddy. just, I'm, I'm saying it right now to like put it into the universe that like <clears throat> our two worlds have a bridge right now of like, Will Ramos's world and my world has, has a bridge. So like, you guys I'm married? openly, I'm, I, I don't know. My, I, I feel like that's the one man that I could leave my wife for and she wouldn't be mad. Yeah, dude. Celebrity yeah. crush, I get it. Yeah, no, it's it's. I just, I just, honestly, a lot of it's just like I have so much respect for what he can do as a vocalist, and it's just, anyways. So I'm just putting it in the universe that, like, you know, if it happens, don't there's, be surprised if there have been a lot more like we'll call them celebrity appearances more and more at all these events now. Like, not that FD isn't big, hasn't been big in the past, but like recently, like it's been more and more of a thing. I think yeah. every 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 few years, we'll uh, 
we'll get more and more of those and we'll all get to fanboy. St. Louis is interesting because like I've seen a lot of like big pro race car drivers from from various sports somehow at St. Louis where people are like, oh, do you see here this guy's there? And it's like Really? And, I haven't and, heard that at all. Uh I want to say uh Jordan Taylor, who's uh uh I'm gonna mess up what he's in right now. He was there a couple of years ago. I I know that one for sure because he came over and chatted with Riley when I was working there. But there's been a couple of uh, a couple of other guys that have come years. through. Yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a minute. Yeah, and so. we've got a lot of like old NASCAR drivers that drive like at our local dirt track there. So like I know like yeah, ah, I, I, well, I'll it's, butcher the it's name, a so. big track that has a lot of you know huge events there. So I don't think it's yeah. like you know people have to go in for meetings and stuff too. So yeah, it's funny because I don't even look at it as like that kind of a track because drifting is so like removed from all of like the big shows that are there. It's just like right. we just like party and have a good time. And it's just so like whenever the big stuff happens, I'm like, oh, that exists here. Like I forget yeah. that this is an amazing racetrack. Yeah, it's a world class facility. Yeah. Like like to the point where like I told my dad, who's like a big NASCAR fan, and he's like, Oh, where are you off to? I'm like, St. Louis. And he's like, Oh, Golden are you going Gateway. to worldwide? Yeah. He's like, You going to worldwide technology? I'm like, Yeah, actually he's like, No, you're not. I'm like, Yeah, no, I actually am. I like sent him a photo and he's like, you guys do that there? I'm yeah. Like, yeah, dad. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for, thanks for keeping up. All right. Ah, he's, he's an old nah. NASCAR fan. I gotta, I gotta, you know, yeah. You know, make it been, easy for him to understand. I've been to some cool events there. Like right after they like revamped it, they had like this big chamber of commerce meeting that was like kind of rad on like the roof of the spotters tower and stuff. And it was like a happy hour. And like, they like took you for laps around the racetrack and stuff. And like for oh, pace cool. cars, I was like, this is rad. I need yeah. to get invited to these more often. Yeah, I I think I do think we're gonna find a lot more phenomenal drivers kind of coming into your area. Yeah, we got some rippers. Yeah, we got some rippers. I told you, Cotty was coming in whenever uh, we were in that interview. Here yeah, we are. I, I asked him like, "Who are you looking up for?" And you're like, "I'm are. telling you right now, he's gonna be your, he's gonna be sitting here next year." I think it was your quote. Yep, I hope <sighs> he is, but not I, in third I place. Hope so hopefully, too. hopefully, first place, not third place. Yeah, he still made it. Yeah, got on the show. Yeah. Now get your own show. You're pro now. Look at me, dude. Look at me. <laughs> so you're like official coronation right now. Yeah, dude. It's like I gotta say all the right things and like be professional. You did you've done great. Dude, I need to step it up. I need to start stirring the pot or something. Someone needs to. I am gonna start stirring the pot at like these FD events. I was Listen, like, do, Chelsea, do I go, Chelsea's do I, out. We need we saying. need another we need another shit disturber. Yeah, but like do I go in and stir the pot rookie year as like as a rook, or do I like, you know, get acclimated and like let people like me first? That's mm, the thing. There is something to be said about starting a heel, and then there is also something to be said about like starting off a fan favorite and then becoming a heel. Mm-hmm. See, See that's, the probably, rock. that's probably the, the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's probably the move. Maybe I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'll be the first person to fist fight somebody in the pits. I'm not even a fighter, but it'd be it'd be cool. Had some close calls. Uh yeah. I'm sure it's happened in the past, but before my time. Yeah, probably outside of our yeah. knowledge. It's just like back in the early rock. days. Yeah. yeah I could see Vaughn fighting somebody. I know him and JTP got real. I could real definitely see JTP fighting somebody, dude. <laughs> JTP is like the nicest guy ever, but like, Until I also feel like he could just like <laughs> destroy you too. He's yeah. I, I very much like JTP. I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah. He's a good dude. I, I honestly don't know if there's any driver that I've, I've been like, I don't like that person. Maybe, maybe I'm just like, I was like warned. I was warned at one point in time to like, Hey, like you can't love everybody. I'm like, why not? Like, why not? Yeah. You got to stir it up. I don't know. I feel like it would be really hard if you didn't like somebody because you have to get on here and like pretend for an hour and a half that like you like them. Mm, it'd be tough. Or or I don't, and that's the show. We're I could have taken something. this show in a very different direction. Turn me into public enemy number one, dude. I, I do think that there was like some fear initially with drivers where like when we started the show, like, okay, is like, is he going to come on and just like roast me or tear me apart or like bring up like negative stuff or something? I don't know. Like I felt like there was a lot of trepidation in the beginning, but yeah, I mean, it would have been awesome. I could have, I could have gone that way. Yeah, yeah, but you you played the safe route. Sometimes the safe route's smart. That's probably what I'll end up doing. Maybe I'll stir shit up in two or three years. Yeah, once you're established. Yeah, before everyone, we hates both me. will. You start stirring the pot. I'll start stirring the pot. All right, that's perfect. We'll both be like, 
crotchety and tired by then. I'll do it on ground level, and then you can just like do it, do it in front of everyone. Just attack from both ends. <laughs> oh my god, I'm down for That'd it. That'd be amazing. Someone's gonna like reference this in three years. Be like, they actually did it. They're both just angry and upset and just want to just hate everyone. Yeah, we're like those old clerks or those old cops that are just over it and don't take any shit anymore. I think that's exactly it. I think that's, I think that's exactly it. I, I don't get paid happens. enough to take your shit. Cause like there's, there's drivers that have a reputation. I won't say who of like being a bit more crotchety and a lot more stern and very like stand, like, like that stand up ish. What's the word I'm looking for? Like just, just always like willing to like go to battle with judges and staff and stuff like that. Not in a bad way, yeah. but just like always questioning things. And it's all almost always drivers that have tenure and have yeah. know, at least five years in the sport. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've got a couple of people in, in mind. Yeah. They do be doing that. I don't know. I'm just not a very confrontational person. I'm a, I'm a lover, not a fighter. So it's hard for me to like, I don't want anybody to, it's not like I care about everybody, what everybody thinks about me, but like, I don't want people to hate me. Yeah. So like, I don't want to bust down the judge's doors. Like, don't get me wrong. I've done it once, but, uh, I hate being that guy, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't have the energy to be super confrontational. My, my yeah. favorite thing is if I, <laughs> if, if there's somebody I don't like, my favorite thing is to make them look dumb, but not, <laughs> but not like, like doing something to make them look dumb, but like get them into a situation where they like say something or just like prove that they're dumb. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'll, I'll, I'll back them into a corner so you don't look like a dick. Yeah. But like almost just like give them enough rope. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Gotcha. And then I just like real smug walk away. Like you're, that's, you're a jerk. That's my, yeah, <laughs> I think that's what it is. <laughs> I'm here for it. Don't get me wrong. I'm a really, I'm, I'm, I'm a super it. nice guy. I, I, I try to be very happy go lucky. And you know, I feel like that's like the, this dumbest thing to be like, to, to say that like, I am a nice guy, but like, I mean, that's yeah, it. I mean, I'm the same way. I don't, I don't feel weird saying it. Like, Approach me, come talk to me. I don't care. Like, yeah, I'm friends same. with I'm friends with I everybody. Want, I want people to come talk yeah. to me. I love it. Love it. But I love I love making friends, dude. Yeah. Believe it or not, there are people out there who don't like me. And a bunch of them listen to this show, which is great. Hi. <laughs> There's there, <laughs> there are a few people that I would say I'm no longer on great terms with. And my favorite thing in the world is when I post something or I'll like post something about like something like great that's happening in my life. And to see that little notification that they saw that story. And I just. That was for you, buddy. Big smile. That was for you. Yeah. Dude, yeah. you know how often I used to get roasted on that subject about like trying to go to FD and like, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And they're like, no, you're not. And like, obviously as a grassroots driver, it's hard to confidently say that and then not have people talk shit on you. Yeah. But like, but like now, like when I got into pro two, I was like, yeah, we're here. And then I like sucked. And then I got my yeah. first podium. I'm like, that's it, dude. That's it. I'm like, they're like, yeah, you're going to drop out. I'm like, what are you going to do if you never do good? And I'm like, we're going pro, baby. <laughs> there is there's something nice about it when, when somebody has openly doubted you or, mm -hmm. you know, just like naysayed. And then I don't know, there's like multiple ways that you can deal with it. You can literally go back and be like, oh, I told you so. Which I don't think is the right way. I think no. the best way is just to provide a post or a piece of information that only that person would understand knowing that they're going to see it and be like, this one's <laughs> yeah. for you. You're allowed to be yeah. proud of yourself and you're allowed to let people allowed to know. be proud of yourself. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the way I, you're allowed to be proud of yourself. Just don't, don't, don't be, be a dick. Don't about be a it. douche. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it. I, I try. I try not to be until, until Derek's on the podium. He's like, Fuck all you guys. I'm like, have you ever seen that meme of like the dude that's down in like fourth place and he's like yeah. shaking the ship? That's me. The dude. Last that's place. <laughs> if you if you ever get fourth, I will hand I will <laughs> I will on bring the podium you, stand. I will bring you a bottle of pop or something that you can stand next to the podium and shake. Just keep like a four of like a four dollar bottle of champagne in the back seat. Just like just one of those case. little travel ones. Yeah, just for just, a rainy day. Just in case a little briefcase we open. <laughs> I'll shoey it from behind Larry Chen. Like he's not taking pictures of me, but I'm still shoey in back here. Yeah. Are you, are you like, is it like, are you allowed to shoey if you're not Australian? Is that Dude, a thing? I shoeyed, uh, three years ago. 
I was the first yeah. one to pop a shoey, dude. And everybody is doing it now. So I'm going to take that and run with that. Okay. I'll die on you that. Brought that. You brought that to this part. I brought it back. I mean, technically... Josh Robinson did it first. I was I just going to say, I was waiting for you to say it. Yeah. But it's, it's been, a, it was been a hot minute. Like nobody's shooed for a while. And like, I, I was like, Josh if I Robinson ever get it, podium. I don't know. I can't remember. I, I, I honestly can't remember. But you know, I, Danny <clears throat> Rick's been doing it. So I'm like, that's sick. I'm going to do that when I do. And I'm like, you know, when you're get a podium, you're like, it's not what you're thinking about. You're just fired up. And yeah. I heard one of my boys, cause like he's heard me say, I'm going to shoot a million times. He goes, shoo And I go, say no more, fam. <laughs> she was <laughs> off, dude. And they're like, no, don't do that. And it was 105 <sighs> degrees in St. Louis that day. So I'm sure it was a uh, taste. It feels like that every day. Yeah. St. Louis is the one reason I regret making the toque my thing. Yeah. I don't know why, dude. It's, it's only like that for a couple weeks a, a year, but we always have happens to, to be when we're there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's gotta, it's gotta have. A biblical storm, mm -hmm. and it's got to be 105 degrees, hot. if not. Yeah, two years ago, it was 105 or whatever. Like Heat index was like 115, and yep. last year was a storm. Like The first year was that crazy storm that like took Nitto's tire, not Nitto Tire's tent and deleted it from existence. One of the greatest photos I've ever taken is, <laughs> is, is, is Riley... I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the storm. We're all locked in the trailer and he's just in his boxers and he like opens the door. Do you remember this photo? Yes. Opens the door of the trailer. It's like, glasses holy! On. And he just closes the door and runs to the can. Yes. So he dude. comes back like 10 minutes later. I'm like, you okay? He's like, I don't know what's going on out there, but like, sounded like it's the apocalypse good. in the porta potty. I'm like, because yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Like we, we were there uh, and oh. I think it was, it was Valter's was working with Kristaps and like we were right. all just getting poured on and they were in Kristaps trailer and we were just like standing like next to it, trying to like not get pelted by the, the rain and Valters opens the door and just throws a tent out and shuts the door. Like <laughs> they were like, thanks dude. And we like put this tent up and then they like finally came back out and the tent uh, was like blowing away. And like five of us were like hanging on it. It was sketchy. Dude. Uh, Walters is Loki, one of the funniest people. Dude, once you get him talking, I love it. He's very <laughs> quiet, but when you do, he's an animal. Oh, he's a weapon. he's ruthless, dude. I love oh, it. The things he said to me, like if they should have been insulting, but they were so creative that I wasn't mad. Yeah, you're just but like, like you know he doesn't actually fantastic. mean it. He's just so dry. Yeah, yeah, and and arguably. One of the greatest drifting photo drifting photographers we've ever job. seen. You know, every time he's ever shot for me, I've been more than happy with it. When Bro, I when I drove for the ISR, films. they always yeah. hired him, and I was like, I love this. I I don't think I have a print of his yet. I've got a bunch of like my favorite photographers' prints in my office, and I don't think I have one of his. I asked him if I could print off one of his photos once he said yes. Well, oh, there you go. Yeah, on the on the cover of Fuel Labs catalog. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. Not that that counts, but. FD's got so many great media people. Daily Driver Media? Daily Driver, yeah. I don't even want to like list them all off because I'll forget people and they'll get mad. Yeah. No, I'm not going to go that route. I love yeah. all of them. They're all great people. Yeah. And they all do pretty good, pretty damn good job. Jason, dude, my photographer, he rips, man. He collects yeah. all of the like all of the videos and like shots that like no other photographers do. So what's so special about him. It's like he will get the stuff in the pits of like being friends and like doing like yeah. creative stuff in the background. The and he'll video shots that. And like, I have Nate to get good video out on track and like, I don't know, just that's different. the way to do it. It's no, honestly, content. that's the way Nate, Nate will get your run every time and then mm -hmm. bring somebody in who does the creative stuff. That's like zoomed in. It's got, it's like pulling yeah. focus from like a blade of grass. And then it's just like you blowing by. Yeah. I've like, got more pictures of my team this year from the last five years combined. Yeah. Which is awesome. That's the that's stuff good. we want, man. Good content. Yeah. Catch every driver, ride. no matter what level, get a content person. Just yeah. I, I know I, I know everyone's sick of hearing me say that, but I don't care. Yeah. Until every driver from like Pro Am up has a dedicated media person, I will keep saying it. It's worth the investment a hundred times over. Yeah. It pays for itself. Yeah. And who doesn't want to see yourself doing cool stuff? If you're drifting, right. of course you're gonna want to watch yourself drift. That's why sick. wouldn't you? Yeah. You're doing Even cool if you shit. suck. Dude. I suck at drifting. I love the photos of me drifting. I even like, I feel like my, my worst runs have the best photos come from it. So it's like usually cause you're right so, about to spin out and you're at yeah, full you're lock like and it looks angle, epic. like crazy smoke, you're dead sideways. Yeah. Yeah. That's the sickest yeah. shots. No, nobody knows what happens after that frame. No. You just loop no, it. You and just somebody runs inside of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
sick. Dude, well, we're, we're almost at two hours as much as I would Yikes. love to keep this going. I, I know, crazy how quick it goes. Huh? Yeah, we were all worried. It really does. Yeah. I think I got most of it other than uh, I need you to, you brought back the shoe, I need you to bring back planking. Ha <laughs> ha, bet. Yeah. Okay, I'll, cool. I'll plank the podium this year. Yeah. I think that's, uh, I think I got to get the to, halftime like, show, but. We got to most of the notes. Uh, the only note I will give you and you have between the time this podcast is recorded to when it is aired, go back in your Facebook and clean up some stuff. Yeah. I th- Photos I thought, you're tagged in. I thought about yeah. that, dude. And I was No, like, you should. You should. Uh, I was like, Damn, <laughs> he's going to find those. I need to get rid of those. And then you look phenomenal in a dress. That's all I'm going to say. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. I can't say anything. There's a disclaimer. To- I was in a 14 year old drag show. That, that came out wrong. When I was 14, <laughs> when I was 14, I went on a float trip and yeah, it was bad. At least I was like 19 when I, when I have my photos, you can find those too. I didn't delete those. Ah, yikes. Oh, bro. Dude, not good. Anyways, that was phenomenal. What are, you not held good. it together so well right to the very end. I freaked up, dude. It's good. You not can. good. Get rid of that. <laughs> all right, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, for anybody listening, please for me, man. check out the show notes. Go check out all Derek stuff. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm super pumped for you. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm excited to hang out all year too. We get to see each other for four rounds yes, or dude. for eight rounds eight instead of four. Rounds. Yeah. Eight rounds. Lots of good times to be at. That's yeah, for sure. So cool. Thank you again. Thank yeah. you everybody for, Thank you for listening me, and watching and catch everybody next week. Yeah.